freedom, man. That's what it's all about. You've got to groove on freedom, like the good book says. listening to what on earth is happening this show will discuss the topics of human consciousness mind control natural law the occult and all issues that affect the freedom of the people of earth what on earth is happening will endeavor to shine light upon the darkness of our world and to offer empowering solutions to the problems we face as humanity approaches its critical moment of choice. And now, here is your host, Mark Passio. Welcome one and all, you're watching What on Earth is Happening. I'm your host, Mark Passio, my website, whatonearthishappening.com. Ladies and gentlemen, government is slavery. And here on What on Earth is Happening, we are ending slavery one mind at a time. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for tuning in today. Today is Sunday, February 20th, 2022. This is episode number 243 of What on Earth is Happening. And today we are going to be doing an all call-in show on shadow work. We've been talking about the concept of shadow work, what it is, techniques on how to do it, and particularly techniques on how to circumvent and transmute one's psychological fear factors when it comes to what is holding you back from speaking out. What is holding you back from actually getting on the battlefield of the one great work and using your voice to put truth out there into the world, to combat all the lies that were being fed on a daily basis, to combat the garbage, immoral mainstream media, to combat the garbage, immoral government institutions, police forces, military all the things that they're telling people, all the things that are being told to them. The voice of the lie is so much more powerful than the voice of the truth, unfortunately, in our world today. And that's on, that is the unfortunate actual truth, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't understand that the lie being spoken every single day is much more powerful than the voice of truth. I mean, just think about, just imagine one person in the course of their natural lives every day. How many lies continually, how many untruths continually they hear all day, every day from their parents to their teachers, to people involved in their religious communities, to media, all over the news, on television, in newspapers, in magazines, to Hollywood films and and TV shows, and all the other associated media that goes on with that, to members of their own family, to their parents and friends. Imagine how many hours of the lie they are told. And then think about how little the voice of truth ever reaches their eyes and ears. How little any truth ever comes into their minds and hearts. And people want to say the world is waking up when they don't even understand this dynamic of simple proportions of how much, how many lies people are exposed to on a daily basis versus how much truth they ever encounter. And this is what we're talking about here on what on earth is happening. We're talking about, are you contributing to the voice of truth or are you sitting back, not doing anything, not contributing? 
watching passively as if life is some passive movie to be watched on a screen instead of actively engaging in it by speaking. Everybody wants to complain that comparisons to Nazi Germany are made. Everybody has their own definition of what a Nazi is or what a dirty, rotten communist is. You know, you don't want to compare this to, you know, uh, millions of people being starved out, you know, uh, during the Bolshevik revolution and then into, you know, hard communist Russia. And then you don't want to talk about the starvation and death that happened in red China. People don't, you know, want to talk about what happened in the Nazi Holocaust, but only from their limited historical framework of it. As soon as you introduce mind control, introduce mind control and occultism, then they want no, no part of that discussion. As if it wouldn't have required mind control through dark occultic methodologies to brainwash a population to that extent to do uh, horrific uh, tasks that they did to their fellow men and women. And then people want to say we can't draw a comparison to exactly what's happening in our society today. Of course we can. And of course these people are Nazi and communist trash. And these are religions, folks. And you know what? They're two sides of the same coin. This is what I am still preparing and have been working on and not, you know, really making too much more headway toward getting it finished and accomplished and, and actually presented. But I've been saying it for a while. I am going to be doing an upcoming presentation called the dark occult origins of Nazism and communism. And, you know, this is something that has to be explored in, in that because look at what's, look at what we're witnessing going on up in Canada. You know, if you don't think that that is the fruits of dark occultism, that these pig cops will do the things that they will do to their fellow citizenry. And the, you know, the Canadian citizens are getting a rude eye opening you know, a rude awakening, a rude eye opening, because they would, you know, still have a lot of faith in their government and, and police, et cetera, and military. And you're finding out they will follow any order they are given, and they're not going to stand down from their orders. If you thought that you're a dunce, I don't know how else I could say it to you. Unfortunately, you're played, you're fooled, you're under mind control yourself. You don't understand the occult world. You haven't gotten it yet. You haven't really woken up yet. You think you're awake. You think you know something and you don't know shit. You know jack shit is what you know. What you think you know. If you think the military and the police are going to stand down on any orders. If they were given orders to roast babies on spits in the street and pour barbecue sauce on them and eat them, they would do it. They're trash. They're garbage people in their hearts and minds and their parents raised them to be trash. And first of all, let me just say, if you're listening for the first time, you should shut the podcast off. You should go to my website, what on earth is happening.com. You should go to the podcast section and you should listen from number one. So you get a framework. So you get a stepwise progression in place to understand the information that is presented here on what on earth is happening. Because if you don't have that in context, you're not going to understand what I'm saying because you haven't gotten all the building blocks of information. This show is a stepwise progression of information and the later shows are built upon the prerequisite knowledge covered in earlier shows. So don't listen to the shows out of order. And I'm going to say this every single solitary week because people are thick headed. They're hard headed. They don't listen. They don't understand what you have to do to get knowledge. They think you're going to get a tiny little blip here and you're going to thin slice it and you're going to understand what's going on. And I've said to people in the past, your intuition is shit. It's undeveloped. You don't have a developed intuition. You're not good at thin slicing information. You're not good at listening to a little bit and getting the big picture. You're really bad at it. As a matter of fact, almost everybody is. Because you haven't studied the occult world. You haven't worked on those actual areas of your mind and your brain and your psyche through shadow work. You've heard about it, maybe. And that's about it. But you haven't actually done the work. That's what separates the men from the boys. That's what separates the adults from the children in this whole game. You know, and it's not really a game. It's a very serious endeavor. But to turn a phrase, that's really what separates 
the adults from the children in this game that we're allegedly playing, you know? And we're going to continue to talk about here today and take your calls on it on deep introspective shadow work that really has to be done to come out of a trash mentality that will lead you to become a cop or will lead you to join some other government agency. All of these people are bad people. Not a one of them is a good moral person because they and other people who make excuses for them doing the things that they're doing do not understand what the actual definition of being a good moral person is. You have a perceived definition in your mind of what it means to be a good person. This is, this is part of the heart and soul of what on earth is happening. You only believe that you know what it means to be a good person, capital G, capital P, good person. You only believe that you know that, but you don't know it definitively. You don't know it factually. You don't know it actually. Okay. You have a belief about what it means to be good. And that was told to you by your parents, by your teachers, by your clergy members, by your religion, etc., by, by the government, etc. And they've told you lies regarding what it means to be good, what it means to be moral. Most people out there still to this day, even listeners to this show, I'm not talking just to the average person. I'm talking about people who tune in here every week. You still don't know what it means to be a good person. Most of you, you only think and imagine that you do because how many people are actually speaking out? You don't think that is what has to qualify you to be a good person. There's tyranny and slavery taking place and you still aren't speaking out. You, you, you're still not speaking out. You yourself. Go look in the mirror and ask yourself why you're not doing it. You don't think that you're complicit with the tyranny just because you don't agree with it in here? Look, folks, there's a reason, and I'm going to belabor this point before I get to my slides and your calls. There's a, don't you think there's a reason in the chakra system, the higher chakras, right? We talk about the lower chakras, right? The base chakra, the sacrum chakra, the solar plexus. Those are the three allegedly lower chakras. They're all needed ultimately, okay? They're all part of the whole system of the human psyche and the, the actual right action that could be developed within the human being if they work and understand the uh, allegory and not only the allegory, but the energy involved in a system of correspondences such as the Vedic chakras, right? But you always hear about those lower chakras and then the higher chakras, and then they're separated by the heart chakra, right? In the middle. There's three lower ones, three higher ones, and then the heart. The higher ones are the throat, the third eye, and the crown. But don't you think it's very interesting in this system of energy and correspondences that the throat chakra is directly between the heart and the third eye, okay? So think about it. This one represents knowledge of, of self and of what's going on in the world. This one represents true care. And this one sits equidistant right in the middle of them at the throat because the voice has to be the combination of knowing and feeling of knowledge and true care. And then it comes out through the voice. And if we do that, we're activating all three, then we'll attain higher level crown consciousness, Christed consciousness. People still don't understand this. They don't understand the importance of the voice. As I've said since day one, the universe is spoken into existence. What we speak is going to manifest. If we're letting all the dark sorcerers do the speaking for us, a, a dark new world order is going to manifest. If we speak the truth and we raise the, the chorus of the truth throughout the world, then positive outcome is going to manifest and order is going to manifest and good is going to manifest. We're nowhere near that outcome, not even close. And we're dangerously, precipitously near the edge of the outcome of a totally treacherous, horrific world that is going to be tantamount to everlasting slavery. We're right there, folks. And to all the people up in Canada, if, if you're not awake to what's going on as far as occultism goes and mind control, you better go back to number one and you better listen intently because you don't know what the fuck's going on. Not only in your own life, but in the world around you and your perceived vision of it. And you think these people aren't under hardcore mind control and are going to follow their orders to the death? 
They're going to follow their orders to their dying breath because they're in a cult. That's what the police and military are throughout the world. It's the biggest cult on earth. Make no mistake about it. You people are in a fucking cult. Your parents raised you to be a piece of fucking dirt trash. And maybe nobody else will tell that to you, but Mark Passio will. Okay? And I still don't hear anybody saying it to people like this. You cannot be easy on these people. That's what led us here. You want to think that, oh, to being so nice to them is going to make a difference. They look at you with fucking contempt. That's how they look at you. They're mocking you behind the scenes, talking about how they want to run down more people on fucking horses, talking about how they have to learn that technique so they can put it into practice more. They're laughing at you, motherfuckers, laughing at you. See, it ain't going to go quite this way here in the United States. And the, the motherfuckers in charge know it too. Because you know I'm one of the tame ones speaking because I won't do dastardly behavior to other people. But guess what? There's a lot of fucking barbarians in this fucking land who will. And I'm not going to be able to hold those people back and neither are you once that bomb goes off. Trust me, motherfuckers. You're playing with a fucking nuclear weapon. And you're laughing about it thinking that it's not going to come to a negative outcome for you. And keep thinking that way. Keep thinking that way because let me tell you something. You try the shit that you're you're trying here and <laughs> try it. That's all. We're, we're almost begging you to do it because a lot of people are done with the bullshit that's happening here and in other places throughout the world. And we will almost beg you to try outright tyranny because then there'll be no excuse for people not to get up off their ass and take kinetic action, you know? And a lot of people are waiting on it. And a lot of people are hoping for it. And I've said since day one, I'm not hoping for it. I'm hoping that people will back down peaceably and learn that there, you're, there's no way out of this for you guys without bloodshed at this point. There's no way out of it. There's no way out of it. You're bringing that result down upon yourself like you're yanking a building down on top of you with a crane. You're, you're pulling down all of that mass down on top of you because you're, you're in such psychopathic ego that you don't understand you're going to be your own destruction. And that's what evil does. That's what evil is. Evil is the path to its own annihilation because it's so in pure ego that it cannot realize the continuation of this path is going to lead to my destruction. And a lot of human beings are like that too, because it's going to be destruction for them too. And the way out of this is d going deep within into internal introspection about what you know already in your subconscious mind and in your, the deep areas of your psyche and soul and heart to be what is morally right. It's about moral right action. And what you guys are doing is morally wrong action. The police and military believe that they're the good guys when they're evil. You are evil. Serving evil makes you evil. And you serve evil. You do whatever the political master class tells you to do. And who's behind them is a, an occult master class. They're even the puppets. You guys are servants of Satanism. You're servants of Satanists is what you are. And you a lot of you don't even give a fuck. You don't even care. You don't even consider the soul. A lot of you are rat trash atheists who believe you don't have a soul. And you do. Every man and woman dies. Every man and woman will pass from this earth. And you'll find out. You'll find out. And I'm not even saying this like some religious thing. I'm saying it. You will find out because you will die one day. And you will be held accountable to all of your behavior that you did here on this plane on the earth and people are going to hold you accountable to it in the physical domain as well. Don't worry about it. You know, so you better hope and pray you get away with it as long as you can, because the time of reckoning is coming up. And I think that what went on in Canada is a big eye opener for a lot of Canadians. And here's my message to you. You're still ignorant. You still don't understand how things really work in this world. You're ignorant to the world of the occult, just like most anarchists still are, just like most people who consider themselves libertarians and anarchists, even in American society. You're just as ignorant as these people. And it's an 
I get what you try to do. You're trying to point out what they're doing is wrong. Then they're sending their thugs to do violence to you. And you're going to just sit there and take it because you have no means of resistance, the large part of you. And you don't want to, right? Well, let me tell you something. When something like this next happens in the United States, it's not going to be answered with bullhorns. I'm just letting you know. I'm just telling you as a forewarning. I'm not telling anybody to take any action. I'm not threatening anybody. I'm telling you that if you put your finger on the pulse of this, and that the occultists know this as well, the shit that's going on in other places in the world, when they try it here in America, it's not going to go down the way it's been going down in other places. And that's why they're largely backing off their bullshit here that over the last two years, because they know they've actuaried the outcome and they know that there's plenty of people that are going to offer hardcore resistance to them when the time comes and they're not going to be able to beat it. And that goes for the police and the military. You guys better understand what it means to be on the right side of history and get your ass on the right side of history by quitting your fucking satanic cult that you're in. Losers. You're a bunch of fucking baby fucking losers in a satanic cult because mommy and daddy didn't pay enough attention to me when I was a baby. That's what you are. You're a little fucking child that just didn't get enough attention from mommy. Who gives a fuck? How about buck the fuck up, boy? Learn something about yourself. Heal something deep inside yourself that's making you a piece of fucking trash. Because that's what you are. You're a cowardly piece of fucking trash. Every cop. Every soldier. The fuck out of here telling me you're doing anything for the good. You know what? Couldn't spell the word fucking good, you dumbass. Couldn't spell it. And you think you're on that side. You don't know what it means to be good. Your fucking rat trash parents never taught you a fucking thing about morality. Loser. You're a fucking loser in life. And nobody ever sat you down and had that conversation with you, dumb fuck. That's the problem. That's why you're so hateful for yourself and then you want to express that as hate toward other people. You're the fucking loser. You're the fucking coward. You're the fucking ignoramus. And your parents fuck you up, son. Your parents fuck you up because you never had any good parents. Your parents were fucking trash. That's the problem with this world. Trash fucking parenting. And uh, you know what? The same thing applies for most of my listeners, unfortunately, because you're not doing shit. You're not doing shit. You're sitting there listening after all these episodes when you should be getting up off your ass and doing something. I've been asking since practically day one and telling people that action is the path to right. Action is the path to healing the world. Not sitting there thinking about, oh, this is terrible what's going on. Well, what the fuck are you doing about it? That's the question that needs to be asked on every show. And the reason you're not doing anything about it is because you're fucked up too. And you need to get the fuck over it. You need to get over whatever fucking trauma is plaguing you. You need to fucking develop the fucking strength to just fucking do something. Like somebody like myself. I have a lot of fucking trauma too and it's not a fucking excuse. Not an excuse. We all have traumas in our lives. You need to buck the fuck up, do some shadow work, and get the fuck over it so you can get on the fucking battlefield and start helping. Because you're not of any help if you just say you understand and you sympathize. That's not of any help. Not helpful at all. To people who really are helping, thank you. To people who are on the battlefield, I appreciate it. And you're our peers in this effort, in this war effort. For people who have made contributions to the war effort, thank you. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. People have made generous donations to help continue th this work. But for people who aren't doing anything, you're not of any help. You got to get up off your lazy ass, get on the battlefield and do something through an act of your own will. That's what understanding yourself means. That's what understanding the, the, this whole world of spirituality means. It's about right action in the world. To change it by an act of our will. Not praying for it to change. Not wishing for it to change. Not feeling that it's going to change and then magically we think it's going to. No, it's about making it change through an act of our will. And that starts with the power of the voice. 
The universe is spoken into existence. What we speak into existence is what's going to manifest in the physical universe. So then all you got to do is ask yourself the question, look around, look at what's manifesting, and that'll tell you whether we've been using our voice properly. Okay? Let's jump over to my slides. Look, folks, I'm not going to get, I'm going to try not to get ultra, ultra crazy about this, but I have to give it to people sternly. I have to have it to give it to people directly because look at where we're at and what's going on. And I've been telling people this is coming. I've been telling people this is exactly what's going to manifest since day one. Since 2010, over 11 years on this show and longer through my presentations, going on 15 years of my work. And it's unfolding like a nightmare unfolding in slow motion. Knowing everything that I know today about what's going on in the world and who's doing it and how. And blowing the whistle for 15 years. And people are still practically just as ignorant as they've been on day one, if not more ignorant. You got to shut the fucking television off. You got to shut those fucking liar bastard voices off. And start listening to some wisdom. Let's jump over to my slides because I have some housekeeping announcements. Again, this is episode 243, entitled Shadow Work, Exposing Our Psychological Fear Factors, Call-In Show. Thank you to Will Keller for the artwork. Again, we're on a streamlined show with me basically acting as the producer, um, just here at my desk. Thank you to everyone who contributed new equipment. I've upgraded both network equipment and audio equipment. So I really want to thank people for, uh, you know, the technological donations through my donations page. Again, we'll be live on a six month on six month off schedule from January through June. Second half of the year will be dedicated to the, how to become the true media seminar that I host weekly. I have announcements about that coming up and changes regarding it. The one great work network. We have onboarded some new people. They're not live on the site yet. They're in the process of learning how the content management system works and the video server, etc. cetera. Uh, but I onboarded, I think four new people this week, two more coming this week. So hopefully we'll have all six up in the next couple of weeks. So six new additions to one great work network coming at you in the next couple of weeks. You could check out one great work network.com and all the great content creators that comprise uh, this great effort of truth tellers. So I tried to start a subscribe star and it's not working because, um, they want, uh, taxation filing, which I'm not going to do. So I just want everybody to know, do not subscribe to my subscribe star. If you have already subscribed, just change your subscription tier to zero. I created a zero tier. I'm going to see what can be done about getting the first month subscriber, any of the, uh, you know, donations back because they are not going to me. I am not taking them from subscribe star. Let me repeat this. And I apologize for not understanding this prior to starting a subscribe star. I should have probably talked to some other people, but I just jumped in on their website and they did not hit me with the tax collection documents until I actually had subscribers. So I'm not going to keep my subscribe star. This is going away. I'm not going to do it. No one should go up to my subscribe star. I've taken it off my page. I've taken it off one great work network. It's a shame because it could have worked and been a replacement for pa Patreon. But as far as I know, there is no free speech oriented, repeating donation, recurring donation site that does not uh, insist upon you filling out taxation documents, which I'm not going to do. So my subscribe star already has to be put to bed after less than three weeks. And, um, I hope everybody is able to get their, you know, donation funds back, uh, request them back from subscribe star. If you put any through to my account, I apologize for the inconvenience. Um, uh, existing subscribers should go and change their subscription to zero tier. Okay. So this is not going to work out for me. And unfortunately it just happened the way that it happened. And I did not know that I could not, uh, you know, 
pull any funds from there without filling out their bullshit fucking cult forms. You know, government's a fucking satanic cult. It's a cult. It's a death cult. I'm not cooperating with it. The end. So subscribe star, you guys should reevaluate how you're doing things. And, uh, you know, it's, it's unfortunate, you know, everybody who says that they're for free speech wants to totally play the game the other way. What we need is a method of actually taking cryptocurrency on a recurring, uh, you know, monthly or weekly subscription, depending on what people, how people want to set up a recurring subscription. But I know of no, um, I know of no, um, service that does that. So really we're being pushed into cryptocurrency hard now. Uh, where that's going to be one of the only ways of operating between people who are freedom oriented. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I don't have a problem with cryptocurrency. Most people don't understand the technology and how it works. And that's why they're afraid of it because they're technological fucking Luddites and don't want to learn about how it really works. Um, you know, you hear just nothing but fucking sewage coming, spouting out of their mouth when it comes to technology that they know absolutely fucking nothing about. And in all honesty, people like that should shut their fucking mouth and they should learn something just like how they should do shadow work. Shadow work is about shutting your own fucking mouth and learning something about yourself that you don't want to know that you, you have put off in learning because you're thick headed, you're a thick fucking skull and you don't want to understand what's true about you. That's what shadow work is all about doing. It's about shutting your own fucking yap, yap, yap up on the fucking trap up here. Quit your trap yapping because that's what it is, right? And it's that, and that's what shadow work implores you to do. Shut the fuck up. Listen to the voice of fucking wisdom. Learn about what is going on really, truly inside you without bullshit lying to yourself and then change it through an act of your will. It's hard fucking work. Nobody ever said it would be easy. It's simple to do. But it's very hard work and that's why most people won't do it because you erroneously believe that you're good enough and you're not good enough. Most of you are not even not only good enough, you're fucking trash. You're really fucking bad people complicit with evil because you don't speak out and you think you're good enough and you're going to find out on the day that you pass away from this world, you're going to find out the, the woe that is going to await your consciousness. You're going to find out the absolute horrific nature of what you're going to experience and who's going to give that to you is not any fucking higher power or other consciousness. It's going to be you. It's going to be your real actual higher self putting yourself in a state of complete misery because of what you did not do here in life. And you know what? You don't have to believe that. I'm not even going to tell you. I definitively absolutely know it for certain. You don't need to believe me, right? You're going to experience it when you leave the body and then you're going to find the fuck out. See, that's what I've said. This whole life is really a game of it's called fuck around and find out. That's what the, it is in the physical world. That's what it's going to be in the world. That is the, the state of consciousness that is to come when we leave the body. And if you fucked around here, you're going to find out and that's what's going to happen. And you don't need to take it from me. Just wait and you'll find out. So going back to this, there's no good re renewing subscription options. I'm basically being put financially uh, out of being able to do this for the most part. People have uh, definitely been generous and come to uh, a rescue of sorts with donations. And I thank you for that. That really helps a lot and is going to be able to keep what on earth is happening afloat, at least for the time being. But in the long term, the, the, the store... Um, you know, gifts uh, area, um, gifts.waterandearthishappening.com is drying up. Most people are not doing that because of financial hardships they're already undergoing, or they finally lear learned how to download things. I made it easy for people to download things. Maybe that's to my own detriment. I want you to have the videos for free, but if people don't, you know, support my work through donations, through donation gifts, I'm not going to be able to really continue to do this. If, if no resources come in, what what on earth is happening will represent permanently in the future is nothing but a resource drag. It will be a, uh, a continual drag on all of my resources. And I will not be able to have that happen indefinitely because I have to live. I have bills to pay. I have to eat, you know, 
It's like people don't give me all the things of, that, that are necessary for life for free just because I'm Mark Passio and I speak the truth, you know? And that's the problem, folks. People think that somehow I'm some sort of exempt person from the everyday average things that go on in life, and I'm not. I live a life just like every other individual. I have to eat. I have to go to the bathroom. I have to have running water. I have to have electricity. I have to have an internet connection. You know, I have to have gas. And, you know, I'm not exempt from any of that stuff, you know. And it's not been good. I'm just letting you know, the keep, keeping this going has been extremely difficult. And it's going to get a lot worse. And that's why I'm saying people have to start understanding cryptocurrency and using it as a community. Forget just investing in it and like a stock. That's not what it's intended to be. It's intended to be a live currency that is used for exchanges for what people need in the world. You know, to get, it is a fiat currency meaning it is by decree and by belief. That's no different than any other fiat currency. This is a digital fiat currency that through private cryptography keys is outside of the total control of central banks if you store it in a non-custodial wallet. And I know that's like gibberish to most Luddites out there. You know, technological Luddites who don't understand technology, you guys are missing the boat the train is pulling out from the station and you're, you're, you're just amputating your ability to speak and do things in the new world. And you really are. And I know there are people who will insist, oh, this is a tool of, that's a tool of this group or that group. You don't understand the technology. You're just dumb, son. You're just dumb. That's all it comes down to. You're just dumb, son. You're just dumb. Okay. You're a, you're a Luddite and you don't understand how technology works. And you especially don't understand how cryptography and cryptocurrency technology works. Because you're just dumb, son. You're just dumb. And you got to stop being fucking dumb. And you got to learn a thing or two. You got to put your fucking effort toward learning. This is what most of you haven't done. You know? And I'm going to be harder and harder and harder and harder on you. I'm not going any easier because there's no progress in this regard. It's stagnation. It's involution. There's been no evolutionary development. What we need built is a system that does recurring crypto donations. Somehow somebody, some developer should be working on that. You know, I'm working on getting the philosophy aspect out to people. Developers get together and start working on how to do something like this to support the philosophers out there because they have to eat and pay bills too. There is a change to the how to become the true media seminar for 2022. I tried to avoid doing this. I had been thinking about it for a couple of weeks. I have to pull the trigger on this and I am going to have to move the seminar to Monday evenings for personal reasons. Again, a lot of other people don't know what I do. They don't know what goes on during an, an average typical week here. They don't know what I'm going through, what I'm experiencing. I have not publicly told people, but I've alluded that I'm being stolen from through legal channels, legal capacity. And this is probably a deliberate effort because of what I talk about. And my house is in jeopardy and funds are in jeopardy. And I'm, like I said, I may be totally bankrupted and I may have to literally until I can get myself back up to a level where I, you know, am on my feet again, I may have to move in with family. And I've said that before. And you know what? I'm not embarrassed about saying that because this is something that is, this is direct theft that is happening to me. Direct, direct theft with the force of corporations and government behind it. And the people who are doing it, you're total immoral scumbag garbage who's, who had trash for parenting. 
I mean, your parents were probably such horrific fucking people that they just raised you like a piece of dirt animal. That's what it is. That's all. That's all it comes down to. You're just an immoral fucking animal. You don't know what's right or wrong. You don't care about what's right or wrong. And that's what makes you a piece of fucking trash, dirt, scumbag. And you would dare to thieve from other human beings, to thieve from people who have not done anything immorally wrong. You're the one who has done immoral wrongdoings. And you're thieves. You're a lowlife fucking thief. No different than a fucking lowlife fucking mugger on the corner who mugs people and takes their wallet. No different than that, except you're doing it through legal means and through digital means. But you know what? You're going to have all of the fucking rewards of that. You're going to have all the rewards of it. And I'm, I don't, I could say that perfectly calmly to your face because I know where, what the future holds in store for you. And I also know what it holds in store for me, regardless of what hardships I have to go through in this life. And I could say that with absolute certainty. I could shrug my shoulders. I can go like, I am not worried about what's going to happen with me. I'm not worried about it, folks. And it's not a religious statement. It's not a delusional statement. It's not a religious statement. It's a statement of fact. It's a statement of definitive fact because I know what my legacy is here. I know what I did for my soul, for building it. I know what I did for my life. I know what I did to help others learn about these things as well. And I don't need to be concerned about what's going to happen for me next, regardless of what happens in the physical domain. So, you know, maybe before this season of the show is off, depending on how things go, I will publicly explain what's, what has happened. But for now, let me announce these changes to how to become the true media 2022. This is an online technology skill sharing seminar, 23 week, uh, 23 individual class sessions. And I've had to move it now to Monday evening. Now there's still um, a whole month and eight days left before registration begins. So that should make people be able to adjust plans accordingly. I'm, I apologize if this creates an inconvenience, but again, I have to schedule this in relation to what's going on right now in my life and make it as uh, smooth for me as possible to do it. So I have to move it from what I originally set was Wednesday evening to Monday evening. So this is the change. Listen up if you're interested in attending the How to Become the True Media seminar this year. So I'm going to be hosting this on Telegram this year. We're doing away with the Zoom platform and it will be hosted on Telegram. It will be taking place every Monday evening, not Wednesday, but Monday, same time, 8, p 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern U.S. time from Monday, July 11th, 2022 to Monday, December 12th, 2022 for a total of 23 class sessions. There is limited space available. Enrollment will still open on April 1st. Enrollment will definitively close on the 4th of July this year. It will close July 4th, 2022, and not one day later. So if you don't get in by July 4th, we're not making an exception because we need a week to be able to get all the information and make sure everybody's, you know, who, who registered has all the information they needed is in the telegram, uh, you know, uh, group. Okay. So for more information, I changed this both on this card here on this slide. And I changed it on the website, how to become the true media.com. I made that change this morning and, uh, you can read more about what the seminar entails at that website, how to become the true media.com. Now each Monday evening, 8 PM to 11 PM from July 11th to December 12th, 2022. The IPFS project has been going well. Um, this is putting all of my information up as an IPFS node on the IPFS distributed network, part of what is known as web 3.0. We are going to publish the first node information sometime during this week. I have to speak to the individual who runs the first node and uh, get the information uh, for the, uh, the hash 
uh, you know, um, URLs to, to basically uh, be able to make connections to that node through the IPFS client for people. We're going to be putting that data on the IPFS page of what on earth is happening. So we will probably split that page into, um, you know, the form to sign up if you want to become an official what on earth is happening node on the IPFS network. And then probably either at the top or under it somewhere, we will then publish the node addresses that will, um, you know, maybe we might be able to even tie these together as like, a, I think they call that like a super node or something like that, or a node cluster. Uh, but, um, uh, we're not doing that just yet. Maybe in the future, I'll look into that technology and we will do that. But for now, we'll just be publishing the node, um, tags or hashes, you know, uh, they're basically DHT hash tables. So, um, you know, I'll be publishing that. So you could put that node address into IPFS and make the connection to the node. Should you choose to want to, uh, get any of my information that way. So, um, look for that coming on the IPFS page of what on earth is happening this week. Hopefully what on earth is happening.com slash IPFS, uh, at that website, you can also fill in the form there. If you're interested in being a node, um, on the IPFS network to make my content distributed and uncensorable, there are stringent requirements. So you fill in the form and you get the PDF document explaining the requirements and you will need um, a 200 megabit or greater upstream connection to the internet. That's why you need that if you're going to really serve a lot of files. So um, if you don't have that, don't bother with this. But if you do have uh, a 200 megabit or greater connection to the internet in the upstream or upload direction, that will qualify you initially to take part in the IPFS, what on earth is happening, IPFS project. So for more information, visit the website, what on earth is happening.com slash IPFS. The funnel conference concluded last week. I still have it in my um, document here. I just want to say congratulations to everybody involved with the freedom under natural law conference. It was one of the best conferences I've seen in recent times. Uh, I believe they now have all of the um, videos published on their Odyssey channel. Visit freedomundernaturallaw.com to get those archived, um, video files. Uh, everybody did a fantastic job presenting. Congratulations to all presenters and congratulations to all the organizers for putting together a fantastic event. I'm happy to, uh, have helped, uh, promote it because, uh, you guys absolutely did it the right way and it came out, uh, fantastic. So, uh, thank you and congratulations and everybody visit freedom under natural law.com to um, check out the great work uh, that these men and women put forward as part of this great conference that concluded last week. Today is a call-in show. If you want to call in, you can call in via Discord. Thank you to the individual who let me know that the Discord um, link, uh, the, the invite on whatonearthishappening.com slash Discord had expired. I have now put one up there that will never expire. So you can go to what on earth is happening.com slash discord. If you're already watching on what on earth is happening.com at the show page, what on earth is happening.com slash show, you could then click on the little widget, uh, the discord room widget. You could hit connect there and that will redirect you to the discord server room for what on earth is happening. That's where we take calls each week when I take calls on the show. So if you want to, uh, come into our discord room and, uh, call in about, um, shadow work and the last couple of shows that we've done any comments. Cause you know, the show last week went longer than I thought my, you know, a uh, formal presentation and I only got a chance to take one call. So we'll continue with your calls over the next couple of hours. And, um, the topic will be shadow work. And again, I, as I said last week, um, somebody also alerted me that they weren't able to change their nicknames. I've fixed that in the discord server. So you can change your nickname. I will only call on people who are using their actual name in the discord server. Uh, I don't want stupid, crazy nicknames to call out on the air anymore. I just think it's childish personally. You know what I mean? It's like, if you're not willing to put your name out 
you don't really want to talk to me. What, what good are you going to be in this war anyway, if that's how much you're a coward? You know what I mean? That's how I look at it. I look at it like I'm telling everybody who I am. You know, I have a handle on Discord. Obviously, you could put any name you want, but in a server, I'll put my name into the server. You know, uh, it, I'm not talking about going and changing your username. I'm saying change your nickname on the server to something that is your actual name. And then I'll call on you. But, you know, I'm done calling out stupid nicknames. You know, I, I think it's childish to, to do that. And it sounds childish when I have to call on somebody with a dumb name. So I'm not doing it anymore. And that's it. If you don't like it, get your own show. So as a brief review before we go to calls. Um, we talked about the actual working definition of shadow work last week. And a lot of people don't tell you what this really is. They'll, they'll just use the term. But what shadow work really is, is it's a set of psychological techniques that a practitioner performs upon themselves. This isn't like going to a psychiatrist or, a, a, you know, talking to a psychologist and having back and forth, back and forth, back and forth with someone else. This is work that is done with the self privately. I think that should be emphasized. That should be highlighted if people don't understand that that's what this is. Okay. This is something you do for and to yourself. Number one. Okay. That's why I've only shown individuals, right? Haven't shown people having conversations. I've shown individuals in the artwork, right? So sitting in front of a mirror, right? This person, he's got his head on his hands and it's like the universe behind him and he's opening up energy from the heart. It's done to the self, you know, the slide for today's show, one individual walking through a dark tunnel, you know, hopefully toward the light and not further into the darkness, you know, doing work upon themselves in private. That's what shadow work is ultimately all about. So we gave the working definition last week that shadow work is psychological and spiritual improvement techniques which are performed by an individual in order to identify, confront, and transmute specific negative or detrimental aspects of the psyche or, and or personality. And that is indeed what shadow work actually is as a work, as a practice. And again, these three steps are critically important. You could liken them to the trivium, if you will. Identify, that's the knowledge step, right? Confront. That means you don't turn and run away from it. You deal with it. That's like the understanding step. How you're going to have to deal with it is through direct confrontation and transmute. That's what are you going to ultimately in the long term do? You know, that's the wisdom stage of the trivium. You're going to change it. You're going to transmute it. You're going to, it's not going to be eradicated. That means the energy is still there but you've transformed it and transmuted it into something that you can use for your benefit. It stops acting as a detriment and it starts acting as a benefit. That's what shadow work is. And this is what it means to do shadow work, to engage in these psychological and spiritual improvement techniques. In a lot of new age woo woo, they don't explain this. They don't tell you that this is what it is and that this is extremely difficult work to do. Most people in the new age movement movement want you to run away from this. They don't want you to do it. They want you to believe. They want you to have faith. They want you to feel good. You know, positive vibes only. No, that's how you ensure ignorance. That's how you ensure that the negative continues to happen. Only through identification, confrontation, and transmutation are you going to fix this. Are you going to heal this? You know, if you don't understand those three aspects of this, you know, make the diagnosis. Don't run away from the diagnosis. Turn and confront it and deal with it direct. And then change it for the better. Do something that actually changes it for the better. Most people don't want to look in that mirror, right? They don't want to sit there and do the hard shadow work that comes from sitting in the chair in front of the mirror, looking at themselves. Do you think any of these low life scumbag pig, immoral coward losers of the Canadian police forces ever sat with themselves for a moment and told themselves the truth about themselves? No. Cause here's how the conversation would go. I had garbage for parents. They ruined me psychologically and spiritually. 
I have a black heart and a black soul. I'm, I'm a lower level satanic minion obeying the orders of my satanic masters because I know that I'm a dirty, rotten, low life piece of fucking garbage and that I had trash for parents. This is what you got to sit in front of the mirror and tell yourself and then deal with it and accept it and stop making misery for others because of it. You're the coward that got fucked up by your parents, low life. Stop making suffering for others. Just because you're the golem in a cage. You're the golem on a leash, boy. You're the golem on a leash, dumb dunce girl. That doesn't mean you go, go around making suffering for others and trying to rape their natural rights, you loser. You fucking loser. How about you stop being a loser, loser. Sit down and look in the fucking mirror, loser. That's what you are. That's the essence of you. You can transmute it and change it, but you have to start calling a spade a spade. You got to sit down in that mirror and you got to tell yourself what a loser you are first. You got to tell yourself what a black hearted fucking soulless loser you are. That you just want to cause suffering for others because it was caused to you. Almost certainly when you were a fucking child and by your own low life parents, that isn't, that's not my fault. That's not anybody else's fucking fault. It's not even your own fault, but it's your fault for not dealing with it and transmuting it and healing it. And then you want to go out and create suffering for others as a result. That's your fault. It's your fault. You're in a cult right now, regardless of whether you think you can't do anything else for money. That's nobody's fucking problem, but your own. You put yourself in that situation. Dumb loser. You, you want to stop being a dumb loser? Start learning about how the fucking world works. Get out of your fucking cult and have some self-respect and you won't be a fucking loser anymore. That's shadow work. How about that? How about that? Yeah. Yeah. Come and see me in person in real life and I'll tell the same thing right to, from my eyes to yours looking directly in your fucking eyes, boy. You want to think I won't? I'm not taking shit from some low life fucking loser, garbage piece of fucking trash that's a know nothing low life. Because I'm none of those things. I'm healed from that shit. And I know what's going on in the world. I don't think I know. I definitively fucking know. And not some low life scumbag like you is going to tell me what my life experiences have been and that I don't know. You don't know. You're the ignoramus. And this is where you need to sit your fucking ass down and look at yourself and admit what a low life you are. Admit, admit what a scumbag you are. That's the real work to do. Take a look inside your own fucking mind and your own fucking heart before you go and do any actions to anybody else, you fucking dunce. I'm not going to tell you it's going to be roses and, and you know and be a wonderful experience if you're honest with yourself you should be horrified by what you've become because you're a piece of dirt and you can stop being the piece of fucking trash dirt bag that you are you can it is possible with a lot of fucking work it's possible i'm not gonna blow some bullshit smoke up your ass and tell me you're gonna snap your fingers and become a good person tomorrow because you're a fucking low life immoral piece of scum right now and that's going to take hard fucking work to undo it hard work it's going to take to undo you being that loser that you are you think you're on some good side you think you're on some winning side you serve pure satanism at its core with your black fucking heart that's what you serve motherfucker and you know what here's the problem folks We've been too easy on these little scumbag fucking kids when they were 17, 18, 19 fucking years old. We've been too easy on them. They weren't taught by their fucking parents when they were young. They had no fucking guidance. They had no fucking discipline. They were allowed to believe whatever the fuck they want and all these poisonous ideas rained down on them like the fucking plague. And they bought into it all. 
They bought into it all thinking there's no such thing as the difference between right and wrong. Who gives a fuck about truth? Who gives a fuck about freedom? All I give a fuck about is getting mine and getting my money. That's it. Mammon is the God I fucking serve. That's what all their mentality is. That's it. I could join a fucking strong gang that fucking strong arms other fucking people and I'll get money as a result. You're a fucking dirt bag. You piece of fucking dirt. You're dirt bags. I'm not going to tell you you're good people and no, you just need to uh, unlearn a little fucking thing that you've bought into and you got tricked. You become a fucking piece of shit as a result of everything you've bought into in your life. And you're a low life scumbag. Once again, the brain is plastic. The brain is, is malleable. It's movable. It is able to be changed, but you're going to have to do an unbelievable amount of work to change it. An unbelievable amount of work. And if you don't get started now, you ain't going to make any progress. You got to get started and you got to make a colossal, sincere, willful effort. And you're going to need help from other people. You're not going to be able to just do it by, alone by yourself. Shadow work is what you need in addition to getting help from motherfucking people. You need other people to fucking act as mentors to you and fucking explain what's been going on. Explain the fucking trap you fell into. That's the problem. You're only listening to other dumb fucking children in your own fucking cult. Because that's what cult members do. Cult members say, anybody that's not in my cult, they're an outsider. They're on the outside. They're not inside here doing what we're doing. No, because we're not your fucking cult members. You're a fucking cult member. We don't want to be on the inside of your fucking cult because it's a fucking cult. Dumb fucking people join cults just like I joined one when I was fucking younger because I was dumb. You don't think I had to do this to myself? You don't think I had to sit down in front of that fucking mirror and tell myself what a scumbag I was? I did it every day so fucking hardcore that I, I didn't want to live anymore at one point. That's how hard I was on myself. And that's the problem is that so few people are hard on these motherfuckers. Where's their fucking parents telling them that they're scumbag? Where's, where's their children telling them they're scumbags? Where's their fucking nieces and nephews and aunts and uncles and fucking brothers and sisters and fucking wives and husbands? Nowhere. They're probably telling them what a good job they do. Fucking low lives. Shutting people's freedom of speech down. Fucking low lives. Yeah, then you'll go and take the fucking bullshit fucking bioweapon shot and get fucking damaged like other people are being damaged. You know, you don't even understand the people fucking speaking out are trying to speak out for you. You fucking dunces, you fucking dunces. I'm saying this to all the Canadian fucking police and the American police, because that's all you fucking are. You're a bunch of dumb boys and dumb girls. You're dumb. You're just dumb, son. You're just dumb. You want to look at some shadow work? Here's some shadow work for you. That's your shadow work. You're just dumb, son. You're just dumb. That's all. You're just dumb. But you can stop being dumb. You can learn about what's been going on in this world. It is possible. The problem is your parents fucked you up and they made you dumb. Your, your teachers fucked you up and they made you this dumb. It wasn't really when you were young of your own fault or choosing. Now it is to remain that way. Now it is to remain that way because all of the knowledge that you need to undo all the shit that's been done to you psychologically is present. It's present. And anybody that's, we're not, I'm not going to fucking baby spoon feed anybody anymore. You're the one who's fucked up. I'm not the one who's fucked up. I learned about myself in the world and I healed all the shit that was fucked up about me to a, a great extent. Not saying I'm perfect. Nobody's perfect, but I understood what I was doing that was immoral and wrong. And I stopped doing those things. You're still doing them because you're trash, you're trash. And it can be transmuted. The condition of being an immoral scumbag piece of filth villain can still be transmuted. You can still come over to the right side of history, but you're going to have to do a lot of fucking work, especially at this point. You're going to have to do some work on yourself because it's not easy work. 
It's sitting there and accepting totally uncomfortable, horrific aspects of the self that you've bought into for whatever reasons. You don't have enough self-respect. You got a fucking button for a dick. Your fucking parents fucking left you when you were a child. Your girlfriend had sex with another guy. It doesn't matter what the fuck it is. I don't really fucking care. That's not, none of those things are my problem. They're your fucking problem that went undealt with. That nobody told you, you have to work through and fucking transmute psychologically. No, instead you went and joined a violence and death cult and you're taking out all your fucking frustrations about your own bullshit on other fucking people that have nothing to do with it and don't deserve it and are only exercising their rights. Because you don't care about what's right. You don't care about what's right. You don't care about what's wrong. You'll do anything for a fucking paycheck. That's what makes you a low-life scumbag loser. And nobody will just say it like this to you. You know, they don't want to act as the petty tyrant father figure or mother figure to you. And I believe me, I don't want to be in that position either, quite frankly. You want to know why? I don't even think you're really that worth it. The problem is you've created a situation where you're infringing on other fucking people's rights as human beings. And now I got a fucking problem because if you infringe on one person's rights, you've infringed on mine. And I'm sick of fucking people infringing on my rights and others. Because you don't have the right to do it. You only believe erroneously in your bullshit cult belief system that you do have a right to do it. And you don't. In nature, in reality, you do not. So the bottom line when it comes to all of this, folks, the bottom line is you got to Make an effort and stop making excuses. You got to make an effort to improve. You got to make an effort to sit in that fucking chair and look at yourself and what you've been doing and what you haven't been doing and be honest with your fucking self and stop lying to your fucking self and stop making fucking excuses. Bottom line. Bottom line. Get as offended about it as you want. Couldn't give a shit. Everything I just said is true definitively and true in the realm in the realm of nature has absolutely nothing to do with any of my opinions if you don't like it too bad get as offended as you like it's still fucking true <clears throat> before we go to the calls i'm going to just wrap up you know plugging here arc 2.0 is still available i've sent out hundreds now and really happy about people taking me up on this offer. It's basically all the research knowledge that'll get your head out from up your fucking asshole and uh, let you learn a thing or two about what's been going on in this world since time immemorial. And it includes 26,000 audio files that you could listen to anywhere. Uh, 9,500 books, which you probably would not be able to read in your entire lifetime. So you have a library forever. 3,400 videos, which would take you probably a couple years to watch. This is all from my own personal ar archive of research and data gathered since I was basically on the internet, since probably back in like 1994 and 5, you know, when I first got online. You could learn more about the ARC and how to properly pack and ship it. Whatonearthishappening.com slash ARC. One of the things people keep making mistakes about, and I'm going to belabor the point, is they keep requesting signature confirmation for their package. You don't need to do this. Stop doing it. Don't do it. It delays the package because most of the time I'm not here. And guess what? It's probably going to delay your package to the point where it's going to go right back to you to the return address because I'm going to miss it. If you insist that I sign for it, I have an anti-theft container here and I've told you that in the instructions. Listen to me when I ask you, do this out of respect. Have some respect for my work. The work that I've done. I don't want signature confirmation requested. I'm not here a lot of the time during the day when packages come because I'm doing errands or I'm doing other things and I miss the package. Then 
I have to wait for it to come where I could have had it, copied it, and it would be back to you by the next fucking day. So listen, it's in the, there's a whole fucking paragraph in the fucking document about why I don't want signature confirmation. It's not required. I have an anti-theft container. If you request my signature for your fucking package, it's going to be delayed and possibly go back to you. And you don't want to fucking listen. You still request it. It's not that hard to do. And I know you have to request it because it's more money to send that way. So they're not just adding it in automatically. Tell the fucking shipping person no signature confirmation. And listen to the other instructions. They're not there for no reason. They're there because this has to be like a factory process for me. I have too many of them coming in. I can't have them sitting here and having to get in touch with you because something is wrong. It's disrespectful to me. Understand, I'm going to see it as a sign of disrespect to me. And then I'm going to disrespect you. I'm not going to give you back respect when you disrespect me. If I, if I determine you did something directly against what I said not to do in the instructions because it causes more work for me, I'm going to disrespect you. You're not going to get the ARC data and or I'm going to treat your fucking own property disrespectfully. How about I'll just say I'm not putting my signature on it. Send it fucking back. That's what's going to happen. And then you're going to be out $75 or however fucking much you paid to fucking ship it to me. Then it's going to go back to you. And then honestly, I don't want it again after you do that. Be respectful to my offer. I'm tired of it. I busted my fucking hump to put this fucking thing together. I don't have to do this. You will be floored to your foundations when you see what's on this drive. And the work that was required to download and assemble it. Plus, I know probably 98% of what's on it. And you don't even have the fucking decency and respect as one person dealing with only me. I'm dealing with hundreds of fucking people. Have the respect for me, if you value any of my work, to just have the respect to follow the directions I've asked because it makes life easier for me. I don't want to have to say it again. I shouldn't have to say it again. I should, this should be some wonderful thing that I'm talking about nicely and not have to get upset about, you know? But two times in the last week, I get notifications through email and on my phone. Your package wasn't delivered because signature confirmation was requested and you weren't there to sign. When I told you explicitly, don't do it. Just fucking trust me. Nothing's going to happen to your fucking package. I have an anti-theft container at my property. It works. It technologically works. Nobody's ark has been stolen like this. It's not that hard, folks. It's not that hard. It's wrapping up a fucking drive in some fucking bubble wrap, putting it in a box with a return label and a fucking checklist. It's not that fucking hard. People make it hard because they've never sent anything. They don't have any fucking life experience. What I've learned through all of this is that people are just still children. They have no life experience. You've never sent a package through the mail. You've never sent a package through a shipping carrier. You're just children who never grew up and did anything that an adult does. Just fearful little fucking children. You don't know how to fucking set up an email account. You don't know how to fucking connect one computer to another to get files over an Ethernet network. You don't know how, what an Ethernet network is. You know? You don't know what a router is, what a switch is. Nothing. It's just people have no fucking life skills as an adult because they're still living their lives as a fucking little child. That's what the shadow work is to get you over that hump. To stop living like a fucking little fucking fearful child. I should be happy to say, look, here's what you can get with the ARC. I'm not, I'm not asking for anything in return for the information. I want you to have this. I want you to learn what I've learned. I'm taking the hard work out of it for you. 
You can get all the information that I learned to know what I know without having to download it yourself. Good luck finding half of it today with the censorship that has happened. And people won't have the respect to just listen to my document. The document is there, not as a set of stringent, punitive measures for you. It's there because I've learned what not to do by shipping out 2,000 of these fucking things. Don't you get it? I've learned what blocks it from reaching you as fast as possible. And I'm trying to explain to you the things that if you do, you're, it's going to take longer for you to get the data back. This isn't that hard to understand, folks. I, I want to make an appeal. And yeah, I'm cutting into more time. I'm cutting into more calls that I could be taking. I'm making an appeal. Have respect for myself and my work. Just read the instructions. They're, they're very easy to understand. And I, I, don't, I don't make the ARC offer to non-English speaking people for this reason. It's for people who speak fluent English. If you can't communicate with me and the document I've written in English, you, don't, you can't get the ARC from me. You can get it from anybody else you want who might have it. But you, I'm not dealing with that. I need clear, concise communication between the two people involved in the offer. That's it. That's not hard to understand why I did chose that to make this an English speaking individual offer only. It has nothing to do with me being xenophobic or anything like that. It means I need to communicate with you. I only speak English. Okay. Say what you want about that. Okay. Yes. A lot of other people in the world are multilingual here in the United States. We generally speak English only. I took some French in high school. I forgot 90% of it or more. Okay. I wouldn't even attempt to butcher the language out of respect trying to speak it at this point. Okay. So my, my point is we both speak English fluently. The language in the document is very easy to understand. It's not that hard. Just don't do the things I ask not to do because they fuck it up. The things that I say don't do. Fuck up the process and make it take longer for your drive to get back to you. Do you get it yet? So just don't do them. And then you'll get your drive like that. Boom. It'll be very quick. It'll be a fluid process. It'll be very easy. It'll go smoothly. You do the things that I, I tell you not to do. There's going to be a problem. So it's, they're, they're not random. I, I, I realize I get it folks. I get it because you don't deal with anybody and I deal with thousands of people. So you're seeing it from your perspective instead of from mine. I understand. I get this. I'm not stupid like most people are. Okay. You're seeing it from the perspective of why would this person want me to do this, 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 and not do this, 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 because you're one of hundreds of people that I have to deal with. And you're only dealing with one person who put the offer on the table for you to accept. You don't need to accept this offer from me. Do you get that? I'm not entitled to you. I'm not, I'm not like obliged to you to take you up on any offers. You're you want the data that I am making available freely. So you have to do the things that I'm asking or not do the things that I ask you not to do to take me up on my offer. If it were your offer and I want to take you up on the offer, then I have to comply with the way that you set the offer up and what you want done or not done. Don't you understand that? No, you want to know why most people don't understand that? They don't have any fucking common sense in life. Their parents never sat them down and explained that dynamic. And that's the, and they never explained to them, Hey, if this person is making that offer, he's probably getting taken up on that offer by many, many, many people. So he can't change little things just for you. It's gotta be a factory floor process or I won't be able to do it. Then I'll have to just pull the arc offer and nobody gets it. And that's the problem. Maybe this is sabotage. I don't know. Maybe people go, let me needle Mark. So he gets upset and then he'll want to pull the arc offer and nobody will get it. Maybe that's what people are doing. Who knows? I don't know. I almost find it difficult. I almost want that to be the case because I find it difficult that people can be as stupid as they are when I in red am specifically saying, don't do this. And then they deliberately do it. How, how am I supposed to take that? This is the kind of person that needs shadow work that you could see in print. 
I'm saying to you, don't do this. This causes a hardship for me. And it delays you getting what you say you want. And then you do it. This is how sick we are as, as humanity. We're sick inside. That you could see something spelled out and written in your own fucking English language and you still can't understand what it means. Or you just say, I, don't, I think I know better than Mark and I'm going to do it this way anyway. That's the problem. Is that you can't get your yap out of the way and understand I've done this a thousand fucking times. I've done it 10,000 fucking times. You don't know better than me about how this needs to be done. I know better than you. I've done it 10,000 times. You've done it zero times. I'm just saying, folks, I know people will think I'm making a big deal about it, but it, it gives us insight into the human mind and what's going on in the psyche. What's broken in a person that can't simply say, look at what Mark has done. Look at the amount of material he's put out. I could get all the material that he learned a lot of what he knows from for simply just doing a, a tiny little fucking set series of instructions, a process to neatly package something up so it doesn't get fucking busted by fucking idiots in the fucking uh, package delivery industry throwing shit that doesn't belong to them, right? And so that it arrives safely it's an easy process for him and then it goes back safely if you pay attention and follow my fucking instructions it's a snap of the fingers i usually get them out the next day that they arrive they arrive to me the data goes on them that night or that afternoon i pack it back up it goes back out the next day that's how on the ball i usually am but if you fuck with my process then you take me out of my workflow you take me out of the flow of the way I do things and it, it causes problems and it's going to fuck up the data for you. It's going to fuck up you receiving it correctly and in a decent time frame. So if you do take me up on the arc, go up to whatonearthishappening.com slash arc or hit the arc button or link in the main menu. Download the instructions. You fill out the form. You download the PDF document. has all the instructions. It's got the checklist. Just follow it. It's not difficult. It's not tyrannical. It's a process that I learned over, over the many years and thousands of times doing this of what works and what doesn't work. And I know this process because I've done it ad infinitum. You don't know the process because you've never done it. Just follow it out of respect and trust. I'm in one place. I'm asking you to trust me. You don't have to trust anything else in what on earth is happening. You could verify it for yourself in the arc offer. Please trust that I know how to do this and just have respect as a human being for me and all of the work that I have done and simply agree to follow the directions the way that they're written. It's not that hard. And what you do is you show your ignorance and you show your unhealed trauma when you insist on doing it a different way. You, it, it shows me you're really fucked up in a certain way deep inside because for you not to understand very simple instructions like this, yes, they're spelled out very clearly, almost in like a, you know, in a, like a, a, a law document type fashion, because this is how difficult it has been to get people to understand what I want and don't want. I've had to refine this document like a hundred times when I should be working on much more important things. But it shows you how people cannot make a connection in language when they see it in print of what to do and what not to do. That's why I've said spoken word is infinitely more powerful than written word. It's why I don't as yet really have a book out. I still plan on putting a book out at some point, but it's why I've chosen the medium of spoken word and vi visuals to put teaching out to the world because I think it more clearly anchors it in the mind than seeing words on paper. It's very difficult to get people seeing words on paper to understand your true intent and meaning because it could be misinterpreted and it could be heard when being read in so many different ways. Here's the thing. If you find that your brain is addled, if you're, if you're, you're, you have brain fog, don't request the arc. If you, you're, you're addled in some strange way through drug abuse or alcohol abuse, don't request the arc. 
right? If you have some mental, actual, deep-seated psychological problems, don't request the ARC. If you have some form of mental retardation, don't request the ARC. This is for sound mind, people of sound mind in general. I'm not saying you have to be perfect, right? You could be totally ignorant and still be at least a common sense person. Request the ARC. Follow the instructions if you have common sense. If you're so fucking broken that you can't follow a simple set of instructions, don't request the ARC. It's not for you. It's not for you if that's who you are. I'm, I'm, I'm asking you out of respect to do shadow work and be honest with yourself about how deeply are you broken inside, right? If you're so broken that you have to say, oh, I'm going to crumble up paper because Mark asked for only bubble wrap. I have to put this paper in there. You shouldn't be the kind of person that requests the ark. You need to find out what's so broken in you that you have to, you can read with your own eyes, just pad the box box with bubble wrap. And then you go and crumble up a bunch of newspapers. When I specifically asked you not to do that, right? When, when you want to ship it to a business just because you want to. And I said, no, I want it sent to a home address. I don't want it sent to businesses. Packages have been lost by going to the wrong department or the wrong floor, or the wrong desk. And then you're out a drive and you paid for it to be shipped in both directions too. ship it to your home. Be aware it's coming. If you have to make arrangements with the post office, you, with, with the carrying company to deliver it when you're going to be there, you do that. This is what it means to be a competent adult human being and to take care of things, right? Practice. The ARC offer should be a practice. Do you, are your cognitive skills in place? Can you follow a simple set of instructions? It's a test. Look at it as a simple test. How healed are you? How competent are you? How much can you perceive properly what you read? And should it have to be that? No, this should be like boom, 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 done and out, right? The other thing I, I'm learning about this, not to make the whole show about this, but the other thing I'm learning is the more and more people try to do this in an office, in a carrier office, the more the carriers give them problems and, will, and can't or can't or won't do it because they're retards. The, the people who work in these offices like FedEx, UPS, DHL, don't want to be there. They don't want to do their job. They hate their job and you should quit your job. You shouldn't hassle and give other people fucking problems that are trying to get something done by your ass being in that seat in that office. You should quit your fucking job and you should find something you like, even if you have to go hungry. Even if you have to have hardship in your life, you shouldn't create hardship for others. That's part of what shadow work is. Understand you don't have the right to create hardship for others. You only have a right to create hardship in your own life by your own decisions. If you want, if you want to make boneheaded, stupid fucking decisions in your life, that's your right. Once it treads on somebody else's rights, that's not a right anymore. That's a wrongdoing and you don't have any right to do that. This is what shadow work is required for. Get out of your own head. Put yourself in another person's position for once in your miserable, selfish fucking life. Put yourself in somebody else's position once in your miserable, selfish fucking life and understand here's what they're dealing with. I can put myself in that other person's position. I could clearly put myself in the cop's position. I have a wife. I have two children. I don't know how to do anything else. I would still say to myself, because I've done the shadow work upon myself, I have no right to do this. This is wrong. It's not a moral right. I don't have a right to do it and I need to quit. It would keep me up at night because I'm a good person with a conscience, with the knowledge of the definitive and objective difference between right and wrong behavior. These people are such low lives and ignoramuses. They don't even have a conscience. They don't even have conscience, which is the knowledge of the difference between right and wrong. And it's very similar for people working jobs that they hate. I am not, it's not my problem or responsibility that you're in a job that you hate. If the job needs to be done, the position should be filled by a competent person that wants to be there doing it. You insult your soul by doing something that you don't want to be doing. And you could say, yeah, I've said many times, I don't want to be doing what I'm doing, but I'm still here doing it to the best of my ability. I don't feel it should be necessary for me to do this because I feel people have enough information in the world that's available to them and they can make the decision about choosing right action over wrong action. 
And it seems ridiculous that I should have to try to teach the difference between right and wrong to human beings this late in the year 2022. Anyway, my rant and spiel on the ARC is at, a, at an end. If you want to get the ARC, it's still available. ARC 2.0, two terabyte hard drive. What on earth is happening? Dot com slash ARC. Fill in the form. Get the PDF document with the instructions. Do your shadow work. Get your brain to be quiet. Read the document and understand it. And then ship it. And you'll get it back very quickly. And the instructions are not hard at all to adhere to. Once again, GIFs... Um, area the uh gift shop is hurting and is not doing much uh and i understand it's because i probably you know probably because i made the um uh videos downloadable i'm going to keep them downloadable for the time being but you know that has made things uh in so far as donations uh trail off considerably as has being banned from paypal because now most people don't have another electronic payment form. I, I accept Cash App, I accept GPay, and I accept Wise. Wise works very well for both U.S. and international payments with Cash App and GPay working uh, well in the United States. Uh, although some people in the U.K. Have, and maybe in Australia have successfully paid with Cash App, um, donated with Cash App, I should say. So, um, Cash App, GPay, and Wise available donation methods for um, what on earth is happening, donation gifts, as well as five different cryptocurrencies, uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, uh, Litecoin, Ethereum, and Dash right now. I may be adding some others uh, in the future. Um, I'm sorry, uh, Wise was not set up this week. Uh, it will be set up this coming week. So that's another thing I'll be doing this week. Uh, I will be accepting wise right now. It's cash app and GPay. wise. I'm going to be adding to gifts. Hopefully that will help some international, uh, people, um, be able to make donations through gifts. But I just want to say if people do not support gifts, dot what on earth is happening.com, uh, it's making it much more difficult for me to operate on a daily basis here at what on earth is happening. Unfortunately, and, you know, I get most things are full digital and most people know how to download and store things digitally now. Uh, so they're not buying as many hard copies. But, um, you know, I'm just making a, uh, a request here that people do use gifts thought what on earth is happening because that helps keep this operation afloat. And that's all I could do is bring it to your attention and ask that each week. If you do want to make a straight donation for the work that I do here at What on Earth is Happening. To raise awareness of the human condition of slavery, you could do that at the donation page of What on Earth is Happening. That's whatonearthishappening.com slash donate. I have to change this image once again because I took down Subscribestar. But uh, it's basically you could offer a technology donation. Right now there's no tech donations on the tech donation page. Um, you know, I really am... Very, very thankful to people for making uh, tech donations because that helps a lot. And uh, right now, they've been all fulfilled. So thank you to everyone who has done that. Uh, you, once again, you've helped me make improvements to my network. You've helped me make improvements to my uh, audio and video hardware here for the show. Uh, and, you know, that helps things run smoother here. There's many other donation methods. Uh, visit the donate page for those and please do support what on earth is happening to keep this operation going. So those are all the slides that I'm going to have for now. Sorry. I clicked that accidentally. Let me get out of here. There we go. That's what I was trying to do. All right, so <clears throat> let's go to your calls on the Discord platform. Plenty of people waiting in the call-in room, so let's get my headset going here. Okay. 
Let's hear from Brandon. Brandon, you're live on What on Earth is Happening. Welcome to the show. You have to unmute yourself in the bottom left. I have unmuted you on the server end. Check one, two. There you go, Brandon. Sorry, I apologize. I wasn't ready. Not a problem. What do you have for us today? Uh, any aspect of shadow work you want to talk about? Any other things you might want to bring up? Go right ahead. Uh, I only started listening to uh, the What on Earth is Happening stuff probably a couple months ago. I've only really been aware of New Ageism mm -hmm. probably for the last year or so. So it's a bit of a jump from comfortability to not very comfortable with a lot of the stuff I'm hearing. Yeah, you shouldn't be comfortable. Um, this isn't designed to put anybody in a state of comfort. This is designed to shake people at the foundation and core of their being. However, well, what will prepare you better for it is if you go through the podcasts in order, starting from number one. Have, have you begun that process? Actually, yeah, I got to the 13th one yesterday. Okay. So keep going forward with that. It's an unfolding progression of information. And when you go forward into some of the occult material and material on natural law, and then supplement that with my videos from my website on the videos page, you'll start to get the big picture. I feel like I'm slowly coming across it. It's just a lot of information. When would really you say quickly. that... Um, would you consider yourself um, very aware when it comes to the um, traditional control system and machinations that the control system does in the areas of politics, finance, uh, so-called medicine, et cetera? Uh, if so, when did you first wake up to that type of dynamic? Well, uh, I'm a college student, so I'm like, I've also extremely into politics, um, I got a position on my town council that was non-voting. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I used that to kind of uh, give other people a voice as well. So you're still very young. So this is actually good that you're beginning to get into this at this age because going deeper into the uh, system of mind control that is out there, especially through universities and media, um, if you don't start young, uh, they're going to get deeper and deeper inside the psyche. And it's going to be harder and harder to wrench yourself away from that. So it's good that you're doing this at a young age. Obviously, my approach is extremely a harsh one. It's a it's a it's a sledgehammer approach as opposed to a fine, you know, uh, you know chisel and uh, you know a light uh, hammer or mallet. Um, I, I I stopped pulling punches years ago because of. I don't know how deep you got into my background, but, uh, you know, I was involved behind the corridors of world power in the satanic hierarchy and network. Uh, I yeah, actually, uh, where I learned from you from was, uh, I think I saw your natural law document. It was probably the first bit of information I came right. across and, and your, uh, satanic stuff. I briefly um, I talked about it in there. Yes. I do appreciate the fact that, um, when I share your ideas with all of my like friends and like family and stuff like that, I'm now a conspiracy theorist and obsessed with stuff. And ask them if they know where the term conspiracy theorist came from. They probably do not. You know, that I'm, came out I'm after. Myself, I don't think I'm too familiar. Uh, it was actually introduced into common everyday uh, lexicon by the CIA who introduced it as a psychological subversion tactic to deal with people who were questioning the Warren Commission report after the JFK assassination, who did not believe the ridiculousness of some of the things that were you know, put forward in the Warren Commission report, such as a Manlicker Carcano rifle round would be able to survive after going through three people and reversing traje trajectories and shattering a wrist bone. Uh, and survive almost perfectly intact, looking like they just pulled it out of the casing without firing it. Uh, and that was the only bullet that was used in the JFK assassination. When people started clearly, and any person involved in any type of uh, rifling, uh, marksmanship, etc., would be able to tell you that no bullet comes out of, goes through conditions like that and comes out looking like a brand new bullet, hence the term the magic bullet theory. Uh, uh, the CIA needed to have the media and also people just hearing this term uh, start to ridicule 
and treat people as if they were making things up, you know, giving a very, very, very clear understanding that a rifle round, you know, from a man liquor Carcano, number one, you're not going to get off that many shots in that amount of time, no matter how many, uh, reenactments they try to do to convince people of this with, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, gel packs, uh, what a ballistics gel, etc. You know, the, no marksman in a moving with a moving target like that is going to get shots off with that level of ac accuracy. They clearly set up a triangulated kill zone, which is a common practice in, uh, you know, uh, special operations to be done. If you definitely want to get uh, at least uh, one person or a small group of people in a triangulated kill zone. And, you know, this is, this is talked about endlessly. You can read Jim Mark Mars's book, um, on the topic that the movie JFK was actually patterned on crossfire, uh, and many others, um, that, that go into all these details and explains that, you know, shortly after the Warren commission, when people were really saying, no, Hey, this is impossible. This has to be a lie. No bullet comes out in this condition. We've done ballistic tests where you're not going to get a bullet going through that, that kind of a uh, mess to come out on the other side in perfect condition. You know, we'd be mangled, you know, and then they invented that term to basically try to, uh, you know, debunk and uh, make people just look, uh, bad or just, you know, look silly by calling them a theorist, you know, uh, then, and, and that's the whole point. Uh, it has now come to be associated with somebody who is saying something that isn't true, right? A conspiracy theorist makes things up that aren't true, right? That's never what even the term originally was supposed to mean. It means you're trying to explain, you're putting forward a theory of people who worked together to perform some nefarious operation or crime. That's what the definition of the, the, the word conspiracy is in the criminal code, right? So if you could be brought to trial for conspiracy, which is actually ask them, the Canadian truck drivers right now are being arrested and charged with conspiracy. So what are the Canadian police conspiracy theorists? This is what has to be asked of family members and friends that bring up the term because they clearly don't understand the connotation of what the word conspiracy means or where the term conspiracy theorists to mean someone who makes something up that isn't true and then believes in it. No, that's called religion. That's what people who believe the government are. People who believe the government in, in that the government has the right to do the things that they are doing are actually people who invent things that aren't true and then believe that they have those rights in nature. That's a government believer. That's a government supporter, right? A conspiracy theorist simply means it's someone trying to explain the machinations of two or more people who colluded to carry out an operation or a crime in secret without letting other people know. And that happens every single solitary day of our lives. That's we're surrounded by conspiracies. And again, they're saying, what are, what are they arresting the Canadian truckers for? The Canadian police are arresting them and charging them with conspiracy because they're saying you colluded in private to all bring your trucks here at the same time to slow down normal functioning of the city of Ottawa. And they're saying that that's some type of a crime because uh, it's interfering with the way uh, other resources are distributed throughout the city and other tasks that people have to go about. When in fact, this is a response to their rights being usurped by them being told you must put the product of a pharmaceutical company that is essentially untested over a long term into your own body or you will lose your job and not be able to make money and feed your family. See, that's called coercion, right? They're coercing people and then they're trying to say, we're going to charge you with criminal conspiracy because you didn't agree with our coercion and you're coming here to raise your voice and make your, your um, position be made aware uh, to the people of the capital of Canada which is their right to do. That's called a grievance when they have had their rights usurped and it is a conspiracy, right? Were the truckers conspiracy uh, par participants? Yes, they were. Is it a legal conspiracy? Is it harmful conspiracy? No, it isn't. It is lawful and it is 
something that is their right to do because they've been wronged and they're responding to being wronged. This is what people have to understand, the connotation of words. See, one of the things that I explained early on in What on Earth is Happening is one of the roots of all ignorance, the roots of all ignorance in the world is hearing a word used and not understanding its actual correct definition and then continuing, just letting it go by. And then you try to continue with the conversation, with the exercise, with whatever you're attempting to learn. And there's still cloudiness or complete lack of understanding when it comes to the definition of the term. The first thing that should be taught to any child learning anything is if you encounter a word that you do not know what it means, you stop everything and you do not proceed until the w definition of the word, the meaning of the word has to be clearly established in your mind or you don't move forward. And you know who does this most of all? Who doesn't adhere to this most of all, I should say? Children in school because they don't want to be made to feel stupid, right? And then what actually makes them stupid is they've proceeded forward without that understanding anchored firmly in place. And this is also why I try to explain to people the etymology of words in the English language and where they come from, from the ancient romantic languages of Greek, ancient Greek and ancient, ancient Latin. Because if you don't understand why the creators of the English language, when these words were first starting to be used in English, uh, you know, parlance, the, where did they come from? Why did they choose to formulate them in such ways. And that is the study of etymological origins of words. And these people clearly have not done this, unfortunately. And it's like, I'm not, I'm not getting like ultra hard on, on their case, but I'm trying to say what you need to make them aware of is you, you, you need to explain to them, they believe erroneously that they have an accurate understanding of the definition of certain words when in fact they do not they b only believe they know the meaning of the term but they don't know the meaning of the term in point of fact actuality in nature in reality and it's a terrible thing to have to explain to somebody it's a terrible thing to have to sit someone down and look in in their eyes and say you know what? I'm very sorry to have to break the news to you, but you don't know what that word means and you believe that you do, but you don't know what it actually means. And that's what really needs to be done in this instance. But the problem is though, most people won't do that because do you know the type of conflict and um, discomfort that would come about when you're basically saying to someone, you're so uneducated that you don't even know the definition of that word. And then you're using it as if you do know the definition when you're clearly in the wrong. I get it. I know how uncomfortable that would be. But guess what? If we don't do it, they're never corrected. You know? I know. Just a lot of conversations I've had that have been rather uncomfortable because, you know, you can only... You can't force anyone to, to see some of the things that are true. Like, I, I definitely believe in natural law, if anything else that we talk about. Um, but you can only lead them up to the edge of the, the lake and let them peer in for themselves and help them try to discover it. But you can't force them to learn it. It's really a shame um, because, unfortunately, the government did force people to learn their worldview. They forced that worldview through compulsory schooling upon people. And that is why they have their minds so completely. Most people are a product of the modern indoctrination system of public education and university system education. And people have to do research on that, uh, like Charlotte Iserbeet and uh, John Taylor Gatto and others uh, that have explained that this is the extension of the Prussian military model of education that was designed to train soldiers to shoot at strangers uh, because they had to eradicate their conscience. They had to make them willing order followers and they had to basically um, uh, denigrate them and demoralize them in order to uh, make them feel like, uh, you know, this is all you're, you're worthy to do. And that's what the public education system and the university system has done because the, the, 
Uh, the communists of Russia picked up that Prussian model during the Bolshevik revolution or even earlier than that, carried that forward into the communist uh, revolution. And um, it, it then became called outcome-based education. We took that outcome-based educational model into the United States after World War II. We started applying it in our public schools and university systems. And it was part of the Gramsci plan, the plan of the Italian communist Antonio Gramsci, who came out of the Frankfurt School of Bavaria, Germany, which is a think tank that was trying to bring, um, um, trying to bring um, communism to the world. If you really look at all the uh, occult connections, you know, you'll, you'll see there's deep occult connections between uh, Gramsci and the people who really began the um, uh, whole uh, Bolshevik revolution. Um, you, you look at um, uh, young, young Italy and its connections to young Germany uh, and then their connections to the Bavarian Illuminati. You know, I'm going to trace all of these connections in my presentation on the uh, dark occult origins of Nazism and communism. It's a very quick, easy leap to understand the connections between dark occult organizations such as the Bavarian Illuminati and um, uh, other, other um, think tanks that were operating in the world that led to the creation of communism. So, but, uh, you know, when we see how tied in that is with the education system, because, you know, you look at someone like... Uh, Stalin, who said, give me your children for four years and I'll own them forever. I'll own their minds forever. You know, he understood how this dynamic works. And most people in the United States today still don't. They think they're going to school and to college for an education. And what they're receiving is a, a mind control program extended out over the course of 20 years or more. And that's why it's so difficult to get people out of their completely wrong, erroneous ways of thinking. They're not really educated. It's sad. It really is sad. But, you know, it, it, again, the sad thing is, is you're, you're talking to a dumb person in nature that is uneducated. See, if someone opens their mouth and talks about these dynamics for two to three minutes, I, I can thin slice what they know. I'm good at doing that. Most people are terrible at doing that, but I can thin slice where somebody is at with a few questions, get a little bit of feedback from them. And like in the, in the event, I encounter somebody that goes, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist. Like I would hit them with all this information. So they would realize very quickly, it's the other way around. They're the conspiracy theorist who believes in the conspiracy that government is there for your protection and, uh, you know, formalized education is there for your, your edification and your, your learning process. When in, in fact, it's all the opposite government is there to enslave you. And the formalized so-called education process is there to indoctrinate you so that you never rebel against the government's tyranny and enslavement. And they're so dumb. They're so ill-educated. They're so ill-read. They're so non-informed that they don't understand that. And it comes from the lack of their understanding of words, first and foremost, you know, and somewhere along the line, they gave up on real learning. Somewhere along the line, they told themselves, that's not for me. I'm just a common chump that is there to do a job, to, to learn how to press buttons, to do a job, to make money and collect a paycheck. I'm not there to learn how the world is really working and whether my rights are being destroyed or not. I'm just there to, you know, eat, sleep, and repeat. And that's sad. You know, it's sad on so many different levels. But see, when I encounter that, they get a fucking earful. You know what I'm saying? You're not, they can pull that with a million people, but they can't pull that one with this one. Because I get loud and I put so much information in front of them, they know that they're a dunce in about 30 seconds where I, I could explain to them the interconnections between so many things and how it really works that they have no idea and have never looked into any of that information. They've never even looked at one source document or book. They've read what the government wants them to read. They've read what the education system wants them to read and they've left out tens of thousands of books that could explain how the world works. See what these people are. And again, not to belabor this, but I will, 
Um, they're naive children, right? And that's what they're going to hear from someone like me. I, I won't immediately answer somebody because I'm like, I'm like a street dude. You know what I mean? Like people will get in, start to get in conversation with me and I'll then give them the look like, you're not going to tell me what I fucking know. And like, you want to take it further than this in the physical domain? Uh, let's do it. Cause I, I'm done with dumb people. I'm done with dumb people. So when they, nobody ever says that to me. One, because they know it's a unidimensional, subconsciously even, they know it's a unidimensional term that you're not going to apply to someone with my level of knowledge. You're not going to apply when it comes to someone who's been in the occult. I've been in the centers of power of Satanism and know who works within them. You know, you're not going to tell me what I've lived through and what my life experiences have been. No one's going to do that to me without resistance. You're going to get resistance, right? Because I'm no fucking chump punk that you're going to tell what happened in my life. No other person's going to tell me what happened in my fucking life. You didn't live my life. You didn't walk in my shoes, right? And again, obviously, I'm not saying this to you. I'm saying to the, the kind of people who will just dismiss you as a conspiracy theorist for saying some of these things or asking them to look into some of this information. I say, I challenge people like that. Try to just dismiss me as a cons conspiracy theorist or say, write to my, come and say to my face, I'm a liar and I didn't experience the things I experienced in life and see what's going to happen to you. I'm not taking bullshit like that from other human beings who are scumbags, quite frankly. You don't know what I fucking lived through. You don't know what I went through. You don't know where I fucking been or who I met in those places. And those kind of people are ignoramus morons who don't know what the fuck is happening in this world because they've never been in those places and positions. And I have. And I'm not making any bones about it. And my challenge is come and say to my face that I didn't live the things that I lived and watch what happens to your face. You know, I'm not taking bullshit. I, as a, as a person who is now in my late forties, I'm not taking bullshit like that from dumb fucking ignoramuses. You don't get to tell me I didn't live my life the way it unfolded. You're not going to tell me that. Not without consequence. There will be consequence. See? So, and other people can say, oh, Mark, you're letting them get to you. You're letting them get. Picture if someone said, you didn't bear your child. That's not your child. You don't care about them in any way. You, you, you didn't even have them. That didn't come out of your, your womb. I mean, imagine this. You know, this is what people want to dare, dare to try to attribute to me. You know, I'm not taking that in front of somebody's face. Somebody can do that as a keyboard commando on some bullshit anonymous forum as an anonymous coward, but let them try to do it to my face. And they don't, they don't respect themselves and they want to get hurt. They will. Because like I said, you could say even though oh, that's a violation of natural law, they're just saying something. But guess what? You're not going to fucking insult my soul and tell me that my life experiences didn't happen. You're not doing it. Not to my face without consequence. And people want to play that game. Go and fucking play it and see what will happen. You know? So. I hear you. You know, that's just what I'm saying. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of people aren't prepared with the response. You know, they haven't looked into that and why that term is out there. And basically my answer to somebody would be like that. How old are you? Like, I, I would look at them like sideways. Like, you look like you're in your 30s or 40s or 50s or 60s. But if I didn't know any better, I think I'm talking to a fucking four-year-old. A naive fucking four-year-old who doesn't know a fucking damn thing about the fucking world and thinks they do. You know? You believe the bullshit that's on the nightly news and you don't think that's controlled by intelligence agencies? I mean, the, 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 the average fucking moron in this country still actually says the term conspiracy theorist to somebody else and thinks that the fucking news isn't the biggest conspiracy theory in the world? The nightly fucking news? As scripted and controlled as it is and obviously out of the fucking government's fucking own mouth and the, the fucking uh, intelligence agencies' own mouths? These people aren't journalists, they're fucking readers. They read reports that the CIA drops on their desk. They read reports that the fucking NSA and the DOD drop on their desk. 
And they think they're fucking journalists for doing that. They're low life fucking coward scumbag prostitutes accepting a paycheck to lie to people. You know, here in the United States, we're still ignorant fucking morons about that dynamic. Back in Soviet Russia, people would laugh and say, are you going to watch the KGB report tonight? They knew it was coming out of their intelligence agencies. They called the nightly news, the KGB report in fucking uh, Soviet Russia. You know, now, now today we have people tuning into the news like, well, we're going to learn about what's going on in the world today. I mean, it's a fucking three-year-old's fucking dynamic, literally. And that's, that's the kind of disrespect. Honestly, I would just, I'm not telling you to do this. I'm just saying how I would respond. My, I would look at them sideways and go, you look like you're 45 years old, but you act like you're three, you know? And then, then be like, well, go ahead. I don't give a fuck if that offends you. That's true. That's the truth. Because once again, I'm not here to be peaceful and be liked. I'm here to shake things up heavily and to make people understand how much they've been played like a fiddle. And they have to, they have to come to terms with that for their own self. I can't make them come to terms with that. Like you said, you can't make them accept the information. They have to have enough self-respect to understand that they got played. See, I still had enough self-respect to come out of the satanic cult that I was involved in. I had enough self-respect to say, this isn't leading to anything good for me. I want what is true and I want what's going to lead to something that is good for me. You know, in some ways they're so egoic that again, the ego is going to destroy itself. The, the ego's main goal is to get the self to say, I can never acknowledge that I'm wrong. I, I want you to clearly understand that this is very important. If there is one goal that the negative ego, I'm talking about the lower E ego, the calcified ego of it has to be my way. My worldview has to be the right one. I can't be wrong. I can't be fooled. The w number one thing it has to get the psyche and the soul to say is, I cannot be wrong. I cannot acknowledge that I was wrong and that I was fooled. Because that means I was some little, little, little thing. And I always have to be this big, grandiose thing. And I know what's going on. And that can't be right or it would be on the news tonight. And the ego has to get them to say, no, it can't be that. You couldn't have been fooled. You're too good to be fooled. You're too proud to be fooled. You're too big and strong to be fooled. That's all the ego is trying to do. So it holds the being back from the acceptance of truth. And then it holds them back to actually do anything regarding the state of the world. And they stay in a completely paralyzed, inactive state. That's the technique. And think about it. All the social engineers and the sorcerers of the world, the mind control sorcerers in the intelligence agencies, all they had to do was give people two words to say to each other, conspiracy theorist. And that's all they needed to do. They just needed to get that little bit of ridicule out there. And then the ego does the rest. It says, oh, I can't be one of those conspiracy theorists. I couldn't have been wrong about this. They couldn't have been lying about this. You see how it, the technique is actually so easy because most people are so pathetic. If we weren't so pathetic as a group of beings, as, as a whole species, as a whole society, that technique would never work on us because we would just go conspiracy theorist. You mean somebody that understands that on any given day, every single day of the fucking year, there's people who have ill intentions and want to shelter those ill intentions from good people and they work together to, to accomplish their goals and they just don't tell anybody else what they're doing because they're criminals? That, you mean? Is that, is that, is that the kind of fucking, you want to insult me by that? You think that you're not the fucking dunce? You think I'm the dunce? Who knows what the word conspiracy means to breathe, to live and breathe together, you know, to act as, as one spirit, to act as one soul doing the same task. That's all it means from the original Latin conspiro, which means to breathe together. That's it. To be inhabited with the same spirit, to be working together in the, in like spirit. That's anybody that conspires does that. 
If you conspire together, you're doing things in like spirit to accomplish a goal. Not that hard to figure out once you understand the meaning of words. But again, these people never took classical Greek. They never took classical Latin. They came probably from shit schools. You know, they came from shit public schools. I was Jesuit as educated, and a lot of people don't know that. But let me tell you something. You can say whatever the fuck you want about the Jesuits, but they don't fuck around with their education. You're coming out of there knowing the meaning of words. You're coming out of there knowing history. You're coming out of there knowing what the Constitution of the United States says, at least in my school, they certainly did. You know, you're coming out of there knowing the real intent of the founding fathers. You're coming out of there learning origins of certain religious institutions and schools of thought and comparing them with others. You're coming out of there at least with basic uh, knowledge of physics, calculus, etc. You know, mo most people came from shit schools that didn't teach anything. They, they gave you a passing grade as long as you showed up and put your ass in the seat, you know, and that's the outcome based educational model. That's no child left behind. You know, then it continues on in the university system that has become nothing but a, uh, you know, uh, a woke seminar. You know, it's, it's a lengthy woke seminar, the four years of college education in, in, in America, pretty much, you know, uh, you know, so this is what people like that have to just be told and confronted with. And y you kind of got to do it not so nicely in all honesty. That's why, again, I hear people saying that all the time. And I wonder where are the people who are saying that to me, to me, because nobody ever called me a conspiracy theorist. I think because they took a look in my eye once and they said, this might be a bad idea and they'd be right. I, well, I appreciate you taking me on the show, but, uh, I have some uh, prior engagements that I wasn't even expecting to come on. Um, so I just want to touch on the fact that uh, I, I don't truly understand a lot of the stuff you teach yet. I feel like I have to watch several of you your You've got to uh, go through the podcast episodes. all the way through in order, starting from number oh, one. and you have to do it mul multiple possibly. times. Possibly. Yes. Yeah. Because the school uh, system I, has indoctrinated people since the time they practically came out of the womb. And that's a lot of work to undo. It's a lot of unlearning that needs to be done. Absolutely. Brandon, thank you for the call. I appreciate it, Mark. You got it. All right. Let's hear from. Let's go to Dennis. Dennis, you're live on What on Earth is Happening. Welcome to the show. Hey, how you doing, Mark? Pretty good. Yourself? Good. I got your archive. Remember me? I'm looking through a lot of interesting stuff there. Yeah. Tell people about the like arc say, briefly. Uh, what was your impression of it? Oh, well, lots of stuff there about the history, you know, it uh, just loaded with stuff. UFOs, the New World Order, 2012, Mayans. It's just, uh, it's uh, really interesting. I'm going through and I'm going to put select, select bits of it on my own website. So, uh, cool. Yeah, I appreciate the work you put through that and sent it to me. If you know, I'm from Canada, but I didn't, I didn't do one uh, yes. mistake wrong in the <laughs> instructions, right? Most people, <laughs> most people, honestly, to be honest, they don't. They they do follow them through, but I'm just getting more that. Hello. Yes, most people do. They they follow it through pretty well, and they they have no problem with it. But some people are doing certain little annoying things and, and it's, they think it's going to be safer that way. And it really isn't. It kind of just slows the process down. Let me ask you this. When you first got the arc, were you surprised with the amount of content on it? Did we lose him? Oh, yeah. Oh, you got there Tons of stuff. Like you say, I'll, I'll never read it all, but I'm going to, from the titles and stuff, I'll, I'll watch select things and, uh, Put some of it on my site, but yeah, I'll probably take forever. Yeah, I, I like that. I like it that it's a, a stationary resource that doesn't require an internet connection. You could plug it into any computer, and it's all there. You don't have to search the web. You don't need an internet connection to play any of the data on the arc. And then you could copy it to thumb drives. You can copy it to music players for the audio. You can copy it to your phone for audio or video. You know, uh, so um, it's a it's a good you know, central repository resource that does not require an internet connection and therefore can never be censored. For sure. Cause uh, a lot of that stuff you probably won't even find on the net now. It's they're, they're censoring things are being taken down. I'm, I'm, I'm knocked off of social media all the time. It's like, it's just crazy, man. Right. I hear you. So, um, do so you have Donald anything? Trump who's coming out with his own social media? Yeah, I heard about that platform. I don't think it has hit yet, but I, I know what you're talking about. Have you um, um, uh, 
I was going to say, do, do you have any comments on the last couple of shows that I did regarding shadow work? Did you, did you hear um, those two programs or listen or watch those two programs, I should say? Yeah, no, I hear you. I'm, I'm in a process of doing shadow work. Uh, it's like, yeah, it's just like you got to be able to admit you've been duped. Uh, you're, it's not your fault. You're growing up in a whole system. Parents didn't tell you nothing. The system brainwashes you. I've been to university. I've, I've been to college. I can program computers. I had a pharmacy degree. I'm not in pharmacy anymore. Like you say, it's an invalid profession. I, I just stopped doing that. It, it, you can't tell people good nutrition that people don't want to hear it. The boss doesn't make money doing that. They get upset. You're judging them and they take their business somewhere else, right? Sure. I mean, it's all about pulling back from all of the immoral institutions, you know, and, you know, obviously we have to start setting up alternatives, but it is a matter of saying no to the existing ones that are in place. Let me ask you this question regarding shadow work. What types of things did you do or practices perhaps, or even just conversations that you had to have with other people or yourself that began leading to your place of under, understanding the control system and what was going on. Like maybe like what were you doing before you, you know, well you said you were involved in pharmacy, uh, you know, what, before you were awake to all of this, what was the thing that was stopping you from opening up to the reality that this is a total control system? It's slavery. Um, you know, and what did you do to overcome that, to at least look at that? Because then what we have to do is take that stage, get to that stage, which is one aspect of healing and moving forward. But then we have to move forward in the sense of speaking out to others, like even calling in to a show like this could be the beginning of a process like that. And then taking it to a place where you're formalizing work and putting it out there for other people. So what types of practices or techniques did you do or what types of things did you go through that led to that process? Well, at the time, just, just feeling, you know, very, a couple of years ago before this whole COVID stuff hit, right. You know, I was just, just, it's like the creator's got his, his hand crushing me. It's like, something's not right. I can't put my finger on something's not right. I got to do something. So I effectively just quit my job and just started doing my own version of shadow work. And I'm talking on some other doing, doing searching and start building my own site. Like the, like you said, matrix four, I watched your whole matrix four thing. I was doing that whole matrix four thing, getting back to what I came here to do, trying to re rediscover that. And across that, I start building my own website and doing social media stuff. I, awesome. I never did social media before. I thought it's, this is just stuff people want to make them, them, their lives seem so wonderful and happy. I thought it was goofy, but there's so much information you can get, get across on that stuff too, right? You could definitely reach people's minds and start pointing them in certain directions and giving them small bits of information. Absolutely. It's a, it's a starting point. So uh, you said you put out your own website. Do you want to tell people the site? Um, the red pill of truth, the, the red pill of truth.com. Cool. See, that's what it's all about is I getting, about getting the word out to other people, making something, creating something, you know, it doesn't have to be the biggest project in the world, but at least you're adding to the voice of truth and you're putting what you have come to know out there for others to help them along the line. I think that's ultimately what it's all about. That's what we really have to do. So, you know, I commend you for doing that and moving forward, uh, in, you know, doing the great work. So, yeah. So I took it, you know, I've been, been doing, you know, got, I watched all your podcasts, got your arc and I'm adding, I'm going to add a lot of that to my site and I keep building it. The thing is I, I, I used to program computers, so I, I'm kind of techie, you know, right. I, I think I might be able to help you if you're willing. You I, can, I, I'm, you can no. leverage those skill sets in so many ways. Yeah. We, um, uh, I definitely want some more developers, uh, to talk with and, you know, collaborate on projects. So, uh, uh, if you're on discord, just, um, you know, send me a message there and, um, you know, I sent you a some private messages. Uh, I get in these, you might, you were ignoring them. I don't know if you, you didn't like, what I, I just said get or what. so much. I, I'm bombarded with stuff. So I will take a look at it. I have your name here and I will definitely take a look at it. Maybe we could uh, bring you on board with some of the development projects that we're going to be working on in the future. Cause I like, I'm like, you know, I work for pharmacy is a decent paying job and I, and I'm kind of then me early retired and I'm, I'm building my site and like, you need someone to come there. I can program, come to your office and, and work with well, you. I, I don't mind that. I'd like to help you. Dennis, let's talk privately on discord. I'll, I'll try to hit you up this week then. And, uh, you could tell me like what your skill sets are and we'll, we'll talk about a possible future collaboration. 
Yeah, absolutely. Great. Because, uh, you know, I'm learning more and more, but, uh, you know, I, I, my communication style is much like you. I, I don't, I'm not offended at all. I, I curse and I swear and I'm pissed too at myself and everybody. And I'm, I'm looking to hit back and I think we could work together. I'd love to do that. Absolutely. Let's talk about it some more this week. Thank you so much for the call. You bet. Take care. You bet. Bye. All right. Let's hear from <clears throat> Let's hear from Nicholas. Nicholas, you're live on What on Earth is Happening. What do you have for us? Good evening, Mark. How you doing today? Not bad. Um, yeah, I just wanted to make this short and sweet. I was just gonna formally ask you if you'd like to be on my channel sometime soon. Um, and what is it? It's uh, just my name. It's Nicholas Peter Ugero. I do interviews. I've done just separate videos on my own as well. But I just had Chris Jansen. I had Leslie Powers. I'm about cool. to have Brandon Spencer on tomorrow. Awesome. I've had James Corbett, Ryan Christian of Last American Vagabond, Benny Wills. Yeah, let's do it sometime soon. Uh, how do you put the media out? Do you uh, put it out over Odyssey or... Um, I, I started on StreamYard okay. and I stream it to Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter. Okay. And then from there I go on, I put it onto Filmora and then I edit it. And then I use the improved edited version on BitChute and Odyssey and cool. things like that. And then you, you, uh, link on like your own website or is it just like a blog or, or you just um, on I don't those media platforms? Yet. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, we but I do have like a link tree where it has all my at least all my links and you, to my you, channel. you conduct yeah. over uh, the interviews over StreamYard. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, send me a discord message and uh, we'll try to schedule something. Definitely. All right. Perfect. Yeah. I just didn't want to take up much time because if I'm able to get you on my channel, then there's no point of me really taking up <laughs> other people's potential calls. So cool. yeah, I appreciate it, Mark. Thank you. You got it. So more people getting involved. I'd like to see that. That's what it's about. You know, Putting your voice out there, interviewing others, letting people see what work other people have out there. That's what it's about doing. All right, let's go to uh, Jordan. Jordan, you're live on What on Earth is Happening. Welcome. Yo, man, Mark, thank you so much for having me. Like, thank you. Um, you I just want to say fucking thank you. You, like... Um, Everything I know, I've been over your information. I'm halfway through the second time through it, uh, over the since 2020, and like for the like for like the past three or four years, man, I've been doing shadow work. I understand it. I like, uh, dude, like I, I, me personally, and I don't know. Maybe this doesn't work for everybody, but like I had to fucking take mushrooms until they fucking shook me out of my reality. I was just talking about this the shit out of me. I was just talking about this uh, not too long ago with a friend. Uh, and uh, they can be things that are tricky to work with for certain. But if you do it right, you do it in the right context, you do it in the right frame of mind. Psychedelics can really help break the illusion and the spell and set, put the ego to the side for uh, at least a time where you can regroup and start to get your shit right, start to get your shit together. And I, honestly, when I was young, that I, I needed that to take me out of the whole satanic mindset. You know, um, I needed to revisit it. Uh, and I revisited it in the form of DMT and uh, some psychedelic mushrooms as well. And that'll do it. That'll help. It won't keep you there. It won't, it'll bring you up here, but it won't keep you up there. It'll bring you up here. It'll show you what you need to do. And then it'll, It'll drop you back down here and it'll say, well, get up there on your own now. You know, here's what you're missing. Exactly. And uh, it's controversial because it can be um, problematic, especially if people abuse uh, the helpers. You know, if they ab abuse those helper compounds, uh, which are, as I've said many times, consciousnesses. But if you don't go into it with disrespect, it won't show you respect. I mean, I'm sorry, if you don't go into it with respect and you go into that realm disrespectfully, it won't show, show you much respect. That's why there has to be a framework for it, you know, and uh, I'm not saying get involved with, uh, you know, shady shamans or gurus or anything like that. But if you do enough research before just pulling the trigger immediately and you understand 
how these tools can be used. It's, it's like throwing somebody a chainsaw and they don't know, they've never read the instruction manual, never used it, never looked at one, you know, never held one in their hand and expect them to use it wisely, not get hurt. You know, it's like, it can be like that. So that's why right. I tell people look into it, understand what you're getting into, do it in a respectful context, you know, and framework. And you'll probably come out of it on the other end, uh, with, uh, you know, more empowered and with uh, a better mindset as a result, because it, a lot of people are so ego calcified. They need something that strong. That, it, that words are not going to be enough to do it. They need, they need to be in the throes bodily, mentally uh, of uh, another worldly experience or they're not, their, their ego is just going to be too strong. It, it has to get hit with a sledgehammer, you know? Yep. I don't want to, I don't want that sledgehammer to be war. I would rather it be a psychedelic mushroom trip, you know, which will be a lot more gentle than war as, as harsh as it could get it'll be a lot more gentle than war. Believe me. Yeah. I'm, I'm prepared for it though, because of you, I, even though I don't necessarily agree with the fully with the militia that I'm with, man, like I understand that I I'm taking in training. I, I, I understand right. how to clear houses. Now I understand how to bushcraft. I understand. I've, I've have food stocked away. I have ammunition stocked away. Right. I have guns stocked away. They are still fully asleep, but I'm the catalyst in this group. I'm the only one who's, you guys, it's the fucking darker code. You guys, wake the fuck up. You guys, Trump is a Zionist or a Jesuit, whatever. Like, you know, like it's they're too I, I, they're too three D. They're too anchored in yeah. worldly. They don't understand. We are fighting something at a psychological and spiritual level. That that's the level we have to fight this battle on. Ultimately, yeah. If it has to be waged in warfare, so be it. But that's right now at the level of consciousness going to lead right back around to another level of slavery. You know, and that, that's what a lot of them don't understand, you know, cause they're too anchored in the 3d and they're not spiritual. They're not spiritually awake. You know, all the people that believed that Trump was going to be something, man, the, the, I can't even believe that people still are hanging their hat on Trump, you know, and believing that, that he's something drastically different. I told people from Day one, you don't want to put your trust in this guy. It's not going to end up well. He's not awake. He's not aware. He's not spiritually awake. You know, if Trump were spiritually awake and if he were telling people what's really going on in the world out, out front, I'd say, okay, let's, let's get, you know, at least give a shot and say, Hey, let's listen to what he has to say. But you hear the things coming out of this guy's mouth and he doesn't know what's going on. He's trying to tell people he knows what's going on, but he doesn't, you know, and his agreeing with the whole vaccines and things that thinking that there Disgusting. are good things is just puts it over the edge. And if you don't understand that this guy is working with them at worst and at best, he's just not that knowledgeable and he's listening to the wrong people and that's giving him the benefit of the doubt, you know? So, and you know, people who are still saying, uh, QAnon trust the plan like that. That's and, and, you know, since Trump was banned from social media, you haven't heard from the alleged Q, you know, it's just, it's, it's so ridiculous. The savior complex that people want to believe in. And here's what it is. It's part of them not doing the shadow work. If you do shadow work and you understand there's nobody coming to help us, we are going to be forever enslaved on this planet. This is going to be turned into something w worse than what anybody has ever conceived of as hell. That's what in revelatory, you know, scripture, it says people will wish for death and they won't be appeased. They w it will not come. We're, we are going to be so technologically enslaved to the point where and enslaved through duress and violence to the point where people are going to want to die as soon as they're conscious of what life is on this planet and then will not be able to die. You know, they're, they're going to use, uh, artificial technology, keeping people alive, doing life extension, transferring consciousness, any, the forms of transhumanism that you can imagine are already being worked on and are going to be implemented to the point where they're going to make this system. If we don't wake up now, we are going to make a system of hell and slavery 
so bad that people are going to beg for death and not receive it. I honestly believe that's what's headed for humanity's future. And that's how important this battle is right now. This is what I have called in my intro, the critical moment of choice. This is it. You're in it. It's a time period and we're in it right now. It's not one instant, but that critical moment, a moment of choice is a time period. And we have to make the right moral choices now if we're going to ever reverse the human condition. Otherwise, it's going to get worse. I've been telling people that things were going to get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse since day one. Since the first day I started doing this work, I'm trying to explain to people because of the immorality of the human condition, it can't improve until we improve how we think and what we believe and what we do. You're never going to improve the human condition for the better. It's just going to decline and get rapidly worse and worse and worse generation after generation. And this over this whole period of 15 years, it's been nothing but a nightmare unfolding in slow motion. I, I, it's it, almost impossible to reach people. They're so far gone and they're, they're, they're so in a childish, naive, asleep, ignorant mindset. There's no connect. You can't connect from lip to brain, from lip to ear to brain. The connection is broken. They don't understand. You could say it a billion fucking times and they still don't get it. And this is why they haven't done the shadow work. They haven't done the work that they need to do upon themselves first, to even receive this knowledge and understanding. This is what Kabbalah is all about. Kabbalah is uh, an occultic method of shadow work. Ultimately, and I'm studying it. I'm st and I understand it now. I've, I've, I've contacted different people who have left the OTO, who have left the Golden Dawn, and they're spilling the beans out here, dude. Like, you gave me the fucking start that has literally changed. I am a change. I am Neil. I am the new man, man. Like, I, I, it has literally changed the full on paradigm of my life and given me back so much fucking power because I understand how my chakra system works. I understand how the car how the uh, Kabbalah works. I understand the tree of life and the Sephirot. I understand that on mushrooms, it is forcing you to actually access the Sephirot, Gabora and Chesed. I, I, I understand all of these things and you were the catalyst because of that, bro. I understand the definition of magic versus sorcery. I understand psychology on such a deep level that I can fire off things at people's consciousness when they do call me a conspiracy theorist or any kind of bu fucking bullshit like that. At, at a rate of, of, that is a machine gun and it, it kind of pelts them into a fucking corner right. that they don't even know what the fucking say. Right. How many people want to just accept face value explanations of everything? You know, there are people, Probably. people recently telling me and friends of mine, you know, not the whole Corona nonsense, you know, that this whole scamdemic that happened over the past couple of years is waking them up. But then, it forced them to look into things like 9-11. It forced them to look into the JFK assassination. And then you start to realize these things are connected, right? It, it, it's connected by severity and death. And let me explain that because that may be a shocking explanation to some people. The, the JFK assassination is where you could look at this starting with one person and covering up crimes done to one person to get him out of there as an influence in the, the, the Carters of power from, you know, the presidency and his administration and what he was doing geopolitically. But that only affects really one person. And then you could say the people, the ancillary people who might've known if they get, you know, shot or killed, you know, look at what happened with Oswald, you know, so you could say it's two people directly and then some ancillary people, but it's not that many people, right? Obviously, it's a fraud on the American public, but the death, the severity and in death involved is only a few people. You know, then you have, um, you know, what happened in 9-11. And now we, we ratchet it up from a few people to now thousands of people, you know. And the truth was never told about the JFK assassination. The truth was never told about 9-11. Yeah, it was, it was told, it was put out into the world, but the public didn't accept it in massive numbers and then rectify it and hold the people accountable to account. Justice was not done. 
on either of these things. So now you went from a couple of people to a couple thousand people. Now we're in the realm where we're going to millions of people with the pandemic alleged, right? Where now they're taking horrific things billed to them as medicine when they're actually immune system devastators. And now you're going to have millions of people affected. Then when it comes to it ramping up further, you're going to have billions of people affected, you know, it's because what the universe is saying is the more you don't tell the truth and execute justice, the more severity and death is going to ramp up generation after generation after generation. So what's the next ramp up going to be? It's going to be a billion or more souls, you know? And you don't have to be a fucking prophet to understand it. All you got to do is look at recent world history. That's not even in the last hundred years. You know, the devastation and death ratchets from a few people to a, a few thousand to a po probably a few million. And then it's going to be into the billions. And that's because people aren't doing this right here. They're not doing the shadow work. They don't want to sit and uh, tell themselves, I got fooled. I got played. You got to sit in front of that mirror and you got to actually accept. Here's what happened. I was fooled. I don't have to be fooled anymore. I got played. I don't have to continue to be played. I don't have to stay naive. I don't have to stay ignorant. See, that's a one to one choice in the soul at the soul level. It's a one-to-one -one choice at the soul level. You got to sit down, you got to look in that mirror and you got to say, am I going to continue to be the naive ignoramus that I currently am? Or am I going to get wise? Am I going to get street wise and develop some street wise spirituality about how this con game works and has worked for thousands of years? You know, how many people are going to sit they're asking that chair in front of that mirror and have that conversation with their own soul. That's the question. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. I, I, um, I, I actually started a podcast. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm jumping on a lot of other people's podcasts now because my co-host left. So I, I got a new co-host, but, and I'm buying a new computer again. Um, hopefully one day soon, depending on if the world falls off the edge of the earth or whatever. Uh, maybe hopefully, you know, praying I can maybe have you on, on mine or, you know, just, you know, whatever. Sure. Uh, I just wanted to say, bro, I love you. And I really, really, really deeply from the deepest part of my subconscious and heart, I appreciate you for helping me regain so much of my spiritual power, man. Like I, everything, there are so many things that I've been able to stop doing that was draining my energy that was taking away from me that wasn't serving me that was taking away from my actual power to be able to do this type of work and um you know like i don't know if you heard, ever heard of dr sabi at all oh of course yeah yes yeah, like uh, and maybe have you heard of sheila jeet sounds familiar i don't think i'm as familiar though uh sheila jeet is a uh, is is in uh himalayan uh resin herb oh yes and yes i am familiar yes. with this yes yeah, like I, I personally love it. I, I, I know you already know a bunch of shit and everything like that. I just wanted to try and give something back to you since you gave so much stuff, stuff to me. But now, Zemos, just tell, our, tell, tell the listeners what is this beneficial for? Uh, so Sheila Jeet, uh, it not only has eighty-three minerals out of the one hundred and two minerals that your body needs to thrive. Uh, it, it also gives men free testosterone, free burning testosterone. So. You know, that look that you're able to give people in the eyes, like, don't be then like that to give off that energy. <laughs> uh, it, it literally gives you free burning testosterone. It, um, it, if you could take it and you can put it in a gash, in a wound, like I do Muay Thai. Mm -hmm. So I'm constantly kicking the bag. Like right. and my, my skin breaks open on my shins a lot and the skin's really thin next to the shin. So it's hard to, to heal back over. You can literally put it in a gash and it'll close your, your wound up, your hand up in a couple of days. Nice. Uh, you, you like it, it's, I encourage everybody to check out who Dr. Savi was, check out who these, these herbs of the earth are here for the healing of the nations. Revelations 22, two, um, the same way as marijuana or mushrooms are ridiculously powerful things and do over like 50 to a hundred things to your body. All of these other herbs out here 
like literally like it's a game changer and Shilajit, CMOS, yes. Burdock Root, Bladderwrack Root, Blood Cleansers, Gut Cleansers, Parasite Cleansers. You have to cleanse out these lower frequency parasite beings inside well, of your CMOS body. CMOS is so beneficial. Sour Sop. Yes. Uh, I think yes. I know a place yes. that sells uh, Shilajit as well. Uh, I haven't tried it myself yet, but I, I think I will get some. It'll change your whole, bro. You'll be punching through walls, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. <laughs> but I won't take up any more of your time. Well, Jordan, I'll, I maybe... thank you for, you know, you starting yeah. to do the great work. And, uh, you know, I love and appreciate anybody who has awakened and who is uh, starting uh, contributing their voice to this work. So keep it up, my friend. And thank you so much for calling in. Yeah, I rip demons in half now, bro. Yeah, I'm, I'm a force to be reckoned with. There you go. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> thank you, man. Thanks for the call. See, that's what it's really about doing. It's about just getting in and getting involved and making that change, you know, inside yourself, you know. None of us were as knowledgeable as we are now. Those of us who have come to accept what is going on and learning the truth. And it doesn't mean you have to stay in that former state of ignorance and keep beating up on yourself and living in a state of shame for being there. If you stay there, that's kind of what you deserve and you deserve that from other people. But if you are willing to make progress, even small progress to come out of it, that's what all we're asking for. We're asking for looking at things from a different perspective, realizing that you've been lied to, realizing that you've not only been lied to, you're doing things that are harmful as a result of believing in and living those lies, you know? Somebody can, yeah, you could believe things and not do harmful things, but people who are active in the world right now are not only believing in the things that are lies, they're acting in ways that they don't have any right to act because of what they believe. And what we're asking is do some work upon yourself to come to a better understanding of what's really going on and still what, instead of what you've told is going on and what you currently believe is going on. And understand you got wrong information. You were given something that wasn't true and you latched onto it and you took a bite out of it and you believed it with your whole heart that this is the way the world is and you're wrong. You're incorrect. There's a truth about it. It is discoverable. And you can rectify, meaning to set right, what you have already put into the world that is not right, that is wrong. And the only thing that that requires of you is a change in perspective. It requires changing the way you think. And then the way you think and that perspective informs your behavior. And then as a result of your change in perspective, you could then make the change in your behavior. And that's what you're hearing that people have done, or at least begun the process of doing. Shadow work is the key to that. It's what leads to those big changes happening. And it's a process of being honest with yourself. It's a process, it's a one-to-one -one process of sitting down with you, just your own self and saying, what bullshit stories have I told myself? What bullshit stories have I bought from other people? And then I've latched onto them and tried to make them a part of me and I won't let go of them, even though I, I know deep down in my heart of hearts, they're false. You know, that's the problem is that people can't admit that to themselves because they're in such ego. All right. Great call so far. Let's hear from Daniela. Daniela, you're live on What on Earth is Happening. Welcome. Not hearing you yet. Uh, looks like you are unmuted. Check your sound input to make sure your correct microphone is selected. All right. We'll come back to you. Hopefully you can get the tech issue resolved. You were definitely unmuted from the server end. Ah, let's hear from uh, Ivan in Phoenix. Welcome, Ivan. Ivan, I think you're still muted on your end. If you could unmute. So everyone should, yeah, there you go. You're unmuted. Okay. There you go. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. All right, good. 
Yeah, I'm on the cell phone, so sometimes yes. with this app, the buttons are tricky at times. So let, sometimes they're on, sometimes they don't. Let me just say this since we're dealing with it briefly. Um, no one needs to remain muted on the call-in server, right? Because I have you muted from the server end, and then I simply unmute you to take your call. So no one needs to stay muted. You can remain unmuted. Your voice will never go out on the air until I actually server unmute you. That should just be kind of technologically understood uh, regarding how my call in room works. Just wanted to say that. But go ahead, Ivan. Uh, Ivan, uh, one great work network uh, content creator, longtime caller to the show. What do you have for us? All right. Just adding on to that, I think what you just said there is for the uh, computers and software. That's I think works fine with the cell phone. I was trying to turn on my microphone and it said that I'm not authorized to activate on the chat on this mobile thing or something. I guess until you turn me on, then I got to turn it on. So, got whatever, it. But that's on okay. The so side. in other words, yeah. it won't let you unmute until I server unmute you. Understood. Correct. Okay. Yeah. All right. So then as far as the uh, shadow work, I want to give an example of some an experience I had years ago, maybe eight or nine years ago now when I was first starting to wake up and learn stuff and start to do the great work. I had a coworker, an older lady, and I had I would get in conversations with her regarding 9-11 and government and conspiracy theories and all this, and she was resistant a lot. But after a while she came, you know, she came around a little bit here, a little bit there when she saw what was happening in the political system and all this kind of stuff. And one day I offered her a DVD on 9-11. And this is where this fear is very uh, destructive. This is what leads to the ignorance. She refused to take the DVD from me because she said she had a DVD player, but she was afraid to use it because she might break it since she didn't know how to operate it. Wow. So out of the fear of this technology, she remained in ignorance of this knowledge that could have, you know, help raise her consciousness. Ivan, so I've right told people... A simple example. Yes, I've told people the yep. story in the how to become the true media seminar of how many devices I have broken over the years to learn how things work. And you, you, it's almost embarrassing, but it's true in the early days, especially right now. I don't do it as much because I know more about how things work, but in the early days of, of when computers were just coming about and, you know, that, you know, we were, they were coming down to prices that most people could afford to get them into their house. I damaged so much equipment by just ignorance on what to do, what not to do. And it's all a learning experience. You know, you, you learn by making mistakes. You learn by failure. If you are forever afraid of failure, you're never going to try. Right. And that's what making the effort is about right? Saying I'm afraid, I don't know how to use it right now. Isn't uh, an, an adequate or acceptable excuse, right? That's what it is. It's an excuse based in fear. Even if you fail and the effort means, okay, I fail. This doesn't work anymore. It's going to have to be replaced. That's a hit to resources that I have or don't have, right? But you made the effort to get involved and to do something. Everybody's going to have stumbling blocks in their path. Nobody's going to, it for no one, for zero people, is it going to work perfectly smoothly, smoothly from the minute you begin trying till the day you die. It doesn't work like that. There are always difficulties and stumbling blocks. You have to work through them. You have to power through them and say, I'm not going to let the fear of doing something wrong and the fear of failure stop me from making the effort, right? So yes, could something negative occur as a result of you not having a lot of knowledge? Well, you know what the first thing you do? You read the fucking manual, right? You actually look at information that other people have put forward about how to use this properly, right? And that takes time, right? So you don't just immediately, so the first tenet of the how to become the tr true media seminar. We have 10 tenets. It's almost like the 10 commandments of the course, right? The very first tenet is stop and look. That means you don't act. 
So she thinks maybe I have to go in and immediately try to do something with this, even though I've not looked into how its proper operation works, right? You don't need to do anything. See, action comes after knowledge, right? So stop and look means first and foremost, make a total effort to attempt to determine exactly how this does work correctly, right? Make that effort first. That's stop. Don't act yet. Right? So a lot of people in software, they're tapping to click and click and tap and, Oh, get, let's what, let me get this. That there's a box up here. I want to hit that, hit that, hit stop, stop. That's the first thing. The first tenet of my seminar on technology is stop. Don't proceed. Don't go right? Stop and look. What is this saying? What is it asking? What input is it requiring from you? How does this operate and work? You look through things, you look through menu items, you look at interfaces, you look at buttons, you know, you look at icons and then you determine what they are first before action, right? So you don't do a lot of action at first. You're, it's a lot of looking and taking in. This is the grammar portion of the seminar. It means there's a lot to all of this. And the first thing you have to do is simply take it in passive in action, but constantly absorbing data, constantly absorbing information. Stop and look, stop and look. You will determine the right way that it works. And when you aggregate knowledge, what happens to fear? Fear goes downhill. Then with the knowledge in hand, you proceed with confidence and courage that you can do it correctly. This is, these are the tenets that we teach in how to become the true media. I'm giving you one here. Okay. But, uh, that is where an individual like that doesn't have that knowledge under her belt. So she's in fear mode and she thinks immediate action is required when what is really required is stop, take a breath, nothing to get nuts about. You might need to read the manual that came with your DVD player or go online and download the manual and print it out, right? Take in some information. It's going to tell you, you hit power. It's going to tell you, you open the tray, you put it in, you got to be on the right input on the television and you hit play and that's it. Then it's like, oh, that's all it was. Oh, what was I so worried about? It's the same thing when it comes to the great work. There's a little bit more involved in playing a DVD, but you know, it's the same basic building blocks. So Ivan, go ahead and continue. I just wanted to lay that out there and how that relates to so much of what I see, what people do. Yeah. Yeah. And I will be, uh, finally this year, third time, um, uh, third year. I'll be joining you for that media uh, seminar workshop thing because the planet's lined up and it's on days that I'm off. So now Beautiful. for July on or April 1st, I'll register and July on, uh, yeah, be on that uh, class. It's awesome. But, um, You're a also, two-time alumni and going to be a third time uh, attendee and alumni. No, 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 no. No, this will be the, the first time. Oh, it will this, be. This is the, oh, uh, got the, you, the got third you. year. But yeah, the third year each time it was on the on a day oh, where I, we're my gonna, work schedule I had to work. We're gonna but make you year, a dangerous man this year, man. Uh oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll get a lot out of it. So, yeah, I think so too. Yeah, because I, I do a lot of hands on stuff and just tinker and, and learn, you know, by mistake, like, oh, don't do that, that deleted the file, good right. thing I backed it up here or right. copy paste and yeah, do audio video stuff, but yeah. John well, I'm glad so that you're going to be along. able to attend this year, man. That's awesome. And of course, I'm, I'm going to, to, I'm going to bring in people from the, uh, you know, one great work network, uh, are kind of, uh, if you're a content creator on the network, we're going to basically let people attend, you know, it's, it's going to be a scholarship kind of thing because we want the people on the network always enhancing their skill sets. So, uh, that's something that we provide for people that we onboard onto one great work network is they can go right into the, how to become the true media seminar. Excellent. Excellent. So, All right, yeah. So one other thing, yes. moving on, um, with 
going back to that story of fear with this lady, yes. this former co-worker, because she went, went on and retired, so I haven't seen her in a couple of years. But someone like that and, and everything else that happens, you dropped the word uh, a few callers ago, consequence. And we throw that word around, consequence, consequence. And one thing that you turned me on to was the etymology and obviously a uh, language of the bir- of the birds. Yes. Listen to the words. Consequence. Con is with and sequence. There's a sequence. That's the consequence. You can do anything, but you don't think of the consequences, which means it comes with sequences. You do this. She was fearful of uh, getting the DVD because she might break it. Now the sequence is that she's going to lack knowledge and she's going to continue in ignorance and she will be prevented from learning and so on and so on. Those are sequences. That's right. So that's what came with that sequence. That, that's what were her consequences. On the other end, people that you know do the shadow work learn their negative stuff and deal with it and overcome it and improve themselves their consequences the sequences are now they're on a positive path or they're on the path to love and truth and freedom so yeah we got to break these words down how powerful the many words we throw around but with sequence how powerful the understanding of words what it is and how it leads to an understanding of what unfolds in our lives. Uh, and, and that all comes down to the grammar, the basic building blocks of language and why we say the, t- the terms and the words that we say. Uh, so awesome bringing that up. Um, you know, the meaning of consequence, you know, uh, it, it's the way that we unfold things in our time frame. you know, all together. We do this together and we're either in that fear-based consciousness that holds back uh, the progress of understanding and knowledge, or we're in a love-based consciousness, which unfurls it and moves it forward and helps it to evolve into higher and, and further forms. So brilliant. I mean, that's just, you know, it's when more people have to really learn about what goes on with language and the words that we speak on an everyday basis that they don't think has some underlying significance, but you just look into the etymological origin and then you can understand what its real meaning and its real intent is right just like the name of your show mark what on earth is happening uh a lot of negative consequences (laughs) sequences of events that are negative because of uh majority's ignorance fear uh evil uh, order following those are all the sequences you know, put together. So since we're That's talking we're about in. sequence and the possible progression into the future, where, where do you see things going? Do you see people understanding more, waking up to what's really going on, being willing to acknowledge that they were wrong? Or do you see people shutting down and going into fear mode more? Um, what's your take on what, you know, path people are going to choose for the future to, to gain this knowledge, to wake up, to start doing something? with their own voice and their own creativity, or are we slipping further and further backwards? Honestly, it's bad news. I see it, it's, yeah, slipping backwards because we are in a minority of a minority. So even though we are growing, but yet the division, the separation is becoming bigger. Right. And it's being obfuscated every day with the woke people, these fuckers. Yep. So now you got to deal with the woke people and... You have fake-ass Christians, fake-ass anarchists. I'm throwing out fake-ass truthers. You're going to have fake-ass, you know, freedom lovers. I mean, yeah, so... They can't get down to the basic Mm -hmm. understanding of what generates freedom and what shuts it down. If you're engaging in moral behaviors that are your rights, and the whole society does that, and they don't do the wrongdoings that are shutting other people's rights down, we will move toward more freedom and order in society. If we keep stealing, if we keep taking that which does not belong to us, we're breaking natural law. We're not caring about what's right or wrong. And this is stealing property. This is stealing life. This is stealing rights. We don't care about the suffering of others as long as it doesn't affect us or my paycheck. Do you expect good things to happen? Do you expect orderly results? Do do you not expect chaos? Do you not expect suffering? For for people's mind to work like this, you got to realize how broken it has to be. How broken do cops and soldiers' minds have to be to believe they're the good guys? See, what what I often ask people, Ivan, is 
Did the people of 1930s and 40s Germany believe that they were good people? If you would have had a conversation with a German shortly after Hitler came to power and he went out and voted for Hitler, he thinks Hitler is the greatest. He thinks he's going to lead Germany into a new era of a thousand years of advancement. And he's fully behind the Third Reich. He's ex doing what's expected of him as a proud, uh, you know, uh, full-blooded German. And you sat him down in a room and just said, could you please tell me whether, do you consider yourself a good person? Do you consider yourself someone who does that which is good and strives not to do that which is bad? He's going to look you right squarely in the eyes and he's going to tell you, yes, I'm a good person. And, and he solely wholeheartedly believes this. Yet in hindsight, we could look back and say, you're following a megalomaniac. You're following a psychopath and a whole gang of psychopaths that came out of the occult, you know, origins of the Teutonic order and the German and Orden and, you know, the, uh, you know, uh, tool society, you know, and of course then ultimately the De Schwartz son, the black son, which hardly anybody knows about any of these. And you can go on and on. You could look at occultic or, you know, orders in, in the youth, like the Edelweiss order, you know, and you, again, I'm going to cover a lot of this stuff when I eventually do my formalized presentation. But most people today don't understand Nazi Germany as a cult. They don't understand it as a dark occult order. You know, it's just a political wing of a dark occult secret society. The heart of which is where the SS came out of, which was De Schwartz's son, the black son, you know, who's... <laughs> Their symbolism is inscribed still to this day at Vivelsburg, you know, and people don't understand believe, Himmler's Mark. connections to the occult. They don't, they don't, they don't understand, you know, uh, um, connections to the occult, like Hans Kammler, the, the, the big technologist of the third Reich and many, many others in the origins of, you know, people that they believed in and listened to. You know, Baron Sabatendorf, and Carl Villegut, and, you know, uh, we can go on and on and on, you know, it goes back hundreds of years. And, you know, they have no knowledge of any of this. And they think this is just, oh, this was just a political party. You have no idea what you're talking about. Zero. Not even a, a smidge, not even a tiny little bit do they understand the occult origins of Nazism, just like they don't understand the occult origins of communism. And that they're, it's really one thing. They're not separate. Everybody who thinks Nazism and communism is separate, delusional. Delusional. Completely delusional. It comes out of all the same dark occultic belief systems. It's Satanism and it's two wings of the same predator bird of prey. That's it. And people don't want to accept that. They don't want to understand it because of their political persuasion and leaning, you know? They can't admit that they were wrong, that this is all Satanism, that it all comes out of the same ancient occultic belief systems, and it just expresses itself in different ways in, in the modern world through politics. That's it. I've tried to explain it forever. People don't want to understand what Satanism is. They don't want to confront the ego, do the shadow work to acknowledge that you've been played. You were wrong. That's okay. You can still fix it. The brain is plastic. And I don't mean it's literally made of plastic. That means it's malleable and it's changeable. And even if it's damaged, you're able to recover from that type of damage that happens to the actual physical brain. And the mind can be worked and repaired and the psyche can be worked and repaired. And ultimately the soul can be worked and repaired, but you got to work at it. You know, let me ask you this. What led you to doing shadow work initially? Uh, when, cause you know, obviously at one point we all didn't know what we know, what led you to say, I have to look at this stuff and acknowledge that I don't have the knowledge that I need when you were younger? What, what factor did that? And, you know, how did you respond to it? What did you do? Well, I didn't know of it as shadow work until I came upon your work. That was maybe 2011. So I was already like three years into 
like the uh, Tessarian, Alex Jones, uh, David Icke stuff, and Nassim Haraman and all that. But, you know, so I was already learning some things, but until not until I stumbled upon your work and went through the podcast, episode one, da 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 da, da all the way up to 120 something before I finally called in to your live show. I yeah, that's when I was doing Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We've run out of time, unfortunately, on this episode of One of the Things Happening. I've always been here for you. Ladies and gentlemen, remember, we're breaking the law. We are words.